With all due respect to everyone, fuck everyone. I'm just here from my own, from my own self. This is something in me that I'm just itching to get, to get in there and compete and do what I do best. You have to be delusional. Franz Kafka once said, by believing passionately in something that still does not exist, we create it. I think the best way to prove your, your value is to work, is to learn, is to absorb, um, to be a sponge. But you always want to outwork your potential. You know, as hard as you believe you can work, you can work harder than that. Fucking helicopter cook him out. <laughs> right, dude? It sucks, real? man. How, but it's, it, how fitting is it? You know what I mean? It's like, fuck, that's the only way you're taking Kobe out. Is yeah, helicopter. pretty much. Absolutely. Anyways, before we start getting Crazy. too far ahead, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of Trash to Treasure with Kyle Eastburn, Max Bresson, and Shane. On the ones yes, and tunes over here. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's nothing less than an honor to bring another New Smyrna OG into the studio. Welcome to the show, Casey Sparks, man. Yes, thanks sir. for having you. Thanks for having thanks for, me. Yeah, man, thanks for coming. I'm freaking stoked to be here. <laughs> Actually, while, while Shane gets this figured out, why don't you go ahead and give our listeners that don't know you, because we're getting a wider range now, just introduce yourself. Let them know where you're from, a little bit about yourself, and, and kind of what motivated us to, you know, what brought you in here kind of thing. Yeah, so uh, I would consider New Zealand to be my hometown. I mm -hmm. moved here in 92 um, from Homestead. Do me a favor. Let's keep like a little bit closer. A little closer. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, lived in Homestead. We moved here um, two weeks before Hurricane Andrew. Got super lucky. <laughs> um, and I've basically been here ever since. I spent some time in Orlando. Um, it's where I met my wife. Um, but naturally came back to the place that really just paradise paradise yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, it's weird you know I've, you go all these different places and and uh it's just still just it's weird that you could see so many of the same people mm -hmm. um and just it's kind of like a, a town that doesn't cha like change much i guess you could say yeah yeah, yeah um, there, there's a lot of change 100%. going on but it's still like the like the the natural roots of just surfing the beach and 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 just kind of all of it, you know, like my whole family's here for the most part. So yeah, I, I can't yeah. really see myself anywhere else. We're all, we are about to go to Colorado. Um, and I can't say that we won't want to stay there, um, just for a change of scenery. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, so probably brought me on cause I like to run a lot. Um, I'm about to do Leadville 100, which will be nice. my first 100 mile race. <laughs> um, I was supposed to do, Man. um, a hundred mile race in January this year is kind of like a training race, but the qualifying race I was trying to get in with Leadville, which was the Austin Radler in Texas. I tore my hamstring um, during the race. During the race, yeah. So actually, I would say that going into that race, I was like, I kind of had a plan for this whole year. Like twenty twenty four was the year of Leadville. I was going to do it no matter how. Like the only way that you can guarantee that you can get in is if you pay for like they have like a weekend camp um but it's like 1600 bucks uh yeah. plus you know, traveling out to, to Leadville twice in a year mm -hmm. you know, it gets expensive quick so yeah, yeah. um especially one of the with, especially with that i have to imagine like are you got sponsors paying for it or anything like that at this point or is it all on your shoulders no it's yeah it's all on my shoulders you know and, yeah, yeah so you, it's kind of you know and, and and my wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> shout out casey's wife yeah morgan <laughs> is the shit uh <laughs> <laughs> she's my ride or die for sure there you so go, man. Big but support. yeah, so I um, I had the plan of just hammering this race and qualifying. It's a it was a fifty k, um, so about thirty miles. Um, <laughs> and the goal is if you get <laughs> roughly top three in your age group, you mm -hmm. get your coin to Leadville. Um, and for me, I went out there in the best shape of my life. I had a thirty mile training run two weeks before that race, and I was doing basically sets of six miles in my last set was in like the 620 so i was like flying that's insane, yeah you were dude you were averaging six yeah. minutes a mile. my last mile was a 624 what so your last mile last one <laughs> mile 30 yeah so i was what i was like hell, straight up beast mode at the time and like so you know that's just was it then, interval like you were slowing down at, like at you said you're in six I was miles building or just building. you never stopped in 30 miles no i came you know i'd come back to, every six miles i'd come back to my jeep and oh so I it was would, a loop Kind of, yeah. Okay. So I made it like a loop. Come back to my Jeep, grab my like nutrition, drink some water, and then like I had some of my training partners live on the street that I was part. I was doing out in Venetian Bay. Oh, really? Um, okay. Just because it's a lot of pavement out oh, there. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, training yeah. one. Okay, I got you. I yeah, so yeah, this was right. a training one. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Yeah. But yeah, I kind of, um, I had everything together. I was feeling great. And then 
somewhere in those last two weeks, um, I had some little bit of pain in my hamstring, and I just thought it was something, you know. You just ran 30 miles. Yeah, 30 yeah. miles, yeah, you know, like a, little, <laughs> a little sore or whatever. <laughs> right? It's insane, dude. So, yeah, like, I, I kind of, like, remembered after all of it happened, um, I had moved, like, a kettlebell into my sauna, and, like, I was trying to stretch it. And so there's mm-hmm. something there. And then the last week before the race, I didn't run at all. Just kind of making sure everything was good. Yeah. Um, but normally, like, there's some taper miles is what we would call them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just making sure everything was good. So I finally got out there. I ran, like, three miles on the course. Felt great. And then day of the race, um, I started out hot with the the dude that ended up winning the race. And I looked down, and we're running, like, 640s. And I told myself, like, Keep rocking, I gotta kill that. Mm-hmm. nothing below... 715 is what I told myself. Like right. 715 is the average. That is what I want to average for this race. Mm-hmm. Nothing below. And I looked down. I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, so I hopped off the side of the course real quick. I let this whole pack go past me. And I hop back in and I start running. And then, like, out of nowhere, we're going up this section. And, like, my foot slipped on a rock. And it just went the right way. And over the noise of the race, I could hear the pop. <laughs> And just the searing, like, mm. hot pain. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, what the fuck was that? Dude, tell, me, <laughs> tell me that's not the worst sound. I remember hearing my ankle snap. Like, when you can feel, like, you hear it inside of your skin. Yeah. yeah. I feel that shit in my stomach right now. Yeah. <laughs> God it was, damn. It was, it was pretty brutal. So, you know, like, I immediately, I'm like, what the fuck was that? So, like, I stop, and, like, the guy that was running next to me was like, dude, you okay? I was like, I don't know, you know? So I kind of pull off the side of the trail and try to stretch can't get like a good stretch on it so like i'm immediately like don't know what it was like any other to run i'm just gonna run through it see what happens yeah um it like progressively got worse um like i was talking like before the show like you know i got it's a three loop course um to make 30 miles and after the first loop there's like a guy standing on the side of the like the, the finish line he's like do your 10th place good job good job and i was like fuck yeah i'm still going like let's get this done and it just progressively got worse and at mile 15 another uphill it just pop like pop pop and at that point i was like oh. i yeah. had no leg left like i couldn't like i couldn't extend my leg anymore it was just not there like this was all gone so so um, just your hamstring just detached basically yeah yeah Golly, i mean man so from from the back of my knee up to my ass basically it was just like searing hot pain um and yeah like i just it's kind of like fuck yeah. <laughs> what do i do um, what part of the track were you in with you did, did you have to walk all the I way was back five miles away from where Jeez. i could get and yeah. you know this was in like it's like uh what rolling rock texas like kind of out in that area and it was it was hilly okay so mm-hmm. that's hill country like there was hills dude and yeah. being from florida like yeah. you know i'm training for Ludville right now on a fucking stairmaster you know like, like yeah. there's there's no hills here right. so like i didn't really train for hills and let alone for a torn hamstring so yeah so i kind of just started to try to run nothing you know everybody's passing me at this point and then i'm just like in like the pain cave mm-hmm. um which is normally a spot that i like to go mm-hmm. you know but this was like a different kind of pain. A different. This is like real, like pain, like yeah, oh, yeah, like fuck. this is like hospital pain. This <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. Pain. So like I, I was wearing earbuds at the time, and you know I just hey Siri call call Morgan, and she like immediately was like, why the fuck are you calling me? I know you didn't finish the race. What happened? I was like, you're the nurse. I don't know much about my body other than like I think I tore my hamstring because I know that that's what it is. She's like, what are you gonna do? You know. I'm gonna, I got to finish the race. Like, like, I don't know what to do. She's like, is it going to get worse? I'm like, it has progressively gotten worse from the first time it popped, which is at like a quarter mile. <laughs> oh, immediately. So it was almost pretty much <laughs> immediately, yeah. right off the mi- bat. You're 10 miles in at this point. I'm 15 miles 15 in now. 15 yeah. miles in. Into a torn fucking... <laughs> 15 <laughs> miles <laughs> on a torn hamstring, yeah. So oh. um, she's like, well, dude, you, like, you know, you got to stop. I was like, I can't stop. Like, what the fuck am I going to tell Kai, who's my seven-year-old son? And, like, one of the things that, like, I'm big about with him is, like, we finish what we start. Mm -hmm. Amen. We finish what we start. And that's what I said. And I was like, I'll call you back. Like, you know. And Mm -hmm. so she texts, like, our group chat, which, shout out, Happy Humans Training Club. That's my coach, Nick. He owns it. He's the shit. Um, And he's a savage in himself. He's part of our Keys 100 team, which, 
first year we did it as a team we got third place overall nice. um and then the second year we did it first place overall congratulations averaging yeah. like, shout out to happy humans yeah dude um so he uh he just texted in our group chat death before dnf and that was like just chanting death before dnf which is you know did not finish yeah mm-hmm. um so to this day i still have not had a dnf but it was uh that was brutal so you went 15 so you more went miles 15 yeah. more miles yeah so you pushed yeah wow. i walked what, what'd you end up <laughs> what'd you end up getting just la- last no i didn't get last i mean i had Amazing. put so much time into that race like already mm-hmm. you know i was in 10th place after the first loop yeah it, so i was getting passed progressively throughout the day but um yeah, but they had all their muscles yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> like... yeah so the whole thing you know finish what you start but That's... the idea behind leadville is you know there's only a handful of ways to get in one is mm-hmm. a lottery which at this point i had already applied three years in a row mm-hmm. no dice mm-hmm. um so now i'm trying to qualify no dice because i wasn't going to get top of my age group at that point yeah um all the guys that were top of my age group were past me at that point so you yeah. know like i was kind of just the only way to do it is to get a lottery spot shane can you, you pull up the 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 races like i want to see what the track was he was running on yeah austin rattler 50k austin it's rattler. um it's a beautiful course and and it's just one of those it, it's kind of weird because I was so pissed off that I had did that and it happened. But for the first time racing or being in a race, I could like take in the scenery. Yeah. Okay. I'm like, holy shit. It's like really pretty here. There's a gun range and I love guns. Like they're they're shooting over here. Like, so it's just (laughs) like a, it was just weird. Like a bunch of stuff you realized. No, let me ask you this. I didn't hear guns the whole time I was running. Like, and now all of a sudden like there's freaking like 50 cows going off. That's so (laughs) so cool. That kind of shows how like just, Tunnel vision oh, focus dude, yeah. you, you get. Total. That's insane. With Are you like, that's a, that brings up an interesting question because I like when I finally pass the one mile mark and I'm starting to like push myself into that realm of like, I want to be a runner. Yeah. You know, I, but I have to like, I'm not looking at fucking scenery. No. Like I, I'm, I'm down and I'm just focusing on one foot in front of the other. Do you find yourself, is that, do you have like a process when you're like deep, you're mile 20, you're still trying to gain time? Like, are you just, you don't really, I don't know. I, I've, I think it depends on like where or what I'm doing. Okay. You know, it makes sense. like, like mm-hmm. what, what is it? A training run is it a race. Like with a race, like I, like with Leadville, I have a plan. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Scientific. Like yeah. I'm, I'm down to what I'm taking, when I'm taking, how I'm taking, what's going to happen if I can't take it, mm-hmm. you know, like from a calorie perspective, like, you know, you guys had Robert on and Robert's mm-hmm. yeah. like, I just ran over them on Sunday out of Doris and he's a robot he is dialed. Like yeah. so dialed. Me He was telling us that he runs <laughs> and then he, he sweats and then weighs himself after to yeah, monitor. Dude, no. I'm fucking it's a key insane. line pie at night. Like, you know, I'm fucking like which I have I have reg- you know, I regress. Like and I I'm not doing that now, but like shit, we like the whole Happy Humans crew did the Iron Man seventy point three Augusta back mm-hmm. in September. And, um, and my wife drove, I didn't realize it was so close to the South Carolina border. She drove across the border to a Publix to get me a Publix key lime pie. Cause that's like my <laughs> ritual before, like night before a race is like pound a whole key lime pie. Mm-hmm. An entire one. Good for the calories the whole though too. fucking thing, dude. Fuck it, the man. whole, the big one. Like yeah, not yeah, the no, small one. Like, we ain't bitching up around here. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> super unhealthy, but like, dude, there's days where like I get done with a workout and I burned like three four thousand calories like it doesn't matter at that wow point. like it doesn't yeah. matter yeah like just get the calories back yeah, exactly so i've since moved on to you know greek yogurt bowls with strawberries and blueberries and granola and mm-hmm. you know like throw some chocolate chips in there for some do sweetness. you find that to be mm-hmm. a more sustained energy when you're exercising yeah, most definitely also where the insulin spike sleep, is kind of like a crash like my sleep is like th- is not affected by that oh, yeah because you're eating okay. a whole key lime pie right before bed so much sugar yeah dude yeah <laughs> It's not good. <laughs> not recommended for anybody. <laughs> like it's definitely like every once in a while I'll still do it just because it's I love key lime pie. Yeah. yeah. Um. And to this day I have not found a key lime pie that's better than Publix, so it's just kind of convenient. Publix dude. Publix checks a lot of boxes, man. Yeah, dude. dude they have dialed in. The There's this spot in Marathon, and they do a deep fried key lime pie. It's a key lime pie. It's a homemade keys oh, key lime fried, pie bro. wrapped in a fucking Jesus. churro, bro. 
Jeez. Yeah. It's, Sign me up for it's that. It's fucked up, man. <laughs> I don't. I wish I could remember the name of the place. It's my favorite restaurant in the Keys, right in the heart of Marathon. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna text you guys when I find it because I'll yeah, be dude, back in a couple I'm months. I'm down with it. For Anything sure. deep fried just adds just a whole another dude, it, at level like, to. Wait, you, yeah, I thought it was gonna be like a fair deep fried, but no, it's a churro, bro. Yeah. yeah. It's a churro so outside of crunchy. Of pot. Churro. Walking. I could yeah. live there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is. It, it was funny. Austin Rattler. It was crazy when when uh, Robert was talking about it because you know what do we like i, I like to ask people what their guilty pleasure is you know, yours came up dude. naturally which i love oh yeah and, dude. and then robert hits us with this gangster statement of my pleasure is in the performance that i get from, yeah from what i take in i'm like well that's fuck he yeah he's uh i mean i i agree with that for yeah. sure that you know and i think if you fuel yourself properly mm -hmm. um you will have a better performance. Right. Which is oh, yeah. why have you yeah. seen you said that earlier. Have you seen the difference between oh, yeah. when you're so dialed in with and when you just right kind of fuck off a little bit? Yeah. Saying that one That's with crazy. the, the yeah. selfie that Your the lady's got. Reacts differently. Is that is on the top of yeah, a cliff? It's like it, it comes down to like You were running on that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so you're just it's flat, there's it's like water. These, there's these like sections where you go up these like just cliff like it's like rock. Just so rock slick, formation. Like it's slick. It was wet from the dew in the morning, and that's how I slipped. Um, oh. The second time I slipped, because like I'm not out wow. there, like you know, there's. Look at that picture. Yeah, that, that's, that's it. so Sick. fucking cool. Yeah. So at the same time as the the 50k, they got a mountain bike race going on. That like you're around kinda, you. Yeah, you're like you know kind of intertwining. Like it was dope, dude. Like that's it was really bad. It was, I I will go back. I will win my age group category, and I will I will smash that. You got a bone to pick with like, this Like yeah, now. I'm I'm still pissed is, off. And this is Whoa. what 30 miles. Uh, that's Holy a thirty mile. That's that a is 30 not. Mile? That is not awesome. I don't think uh, it's not. Okay, no, that looks more like yeah. I was gonna Colorado's say, biggest and baddest. I was going to say I didn't know Texas had mountains like that. I mean, I got yeah. buddies in Texas. They say there is mountain country, but that's huge. Yeah. No. Now Leadville is a different animal. You know, so that's kind of where it, it, it will lead into. That's but, badass. So with with the Austin Rattler, it was more of if you finish the race, you can put your bib number into a hat, and then that's a secondary lottery. Okay. So every year in December, mm -hmm. you, you apply for the lottery and mm -hmm. they draw X amount of names mm -hmm. and you can get in that way. Or you can do a qualifying race. You can qualify with a, a time, which yeah. my age group, the 30 through 39, is um, one of the hardest age groups to, mm -hmm. to qualify in because it's a bunch sense. of savages. Yeah. Um, and then it's also the most slots for lottery spots because there's so many people. It makes sense. I mean, they say that uh, men... Uh, 35 is like that's your physical peak moment yeah. like for your average human being i mean i'm yeah. sure there's there's outliers that keep mm -hmm. it going but yeah. it would make sense that that's where the most competitive is oh yeah especially like like ironman events mm -hmm. like triathlon i i kind of this is the way i would spin it is like yes 30 through like 30 through 34 is or 29 through 34 whatever it is mm -hmm. is is a fast age group they're younger than me i'm almost 38 mm -hmm. um and that's kind of where I first started those. But not everybody can spend $10,000 on a bike when they're yes. 30 years old, you know? Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, when, when I got into the 35 to 39 age group, I bought a really sick bike. Mm -hmm. You and got a career got, now. You got and then I got on. really fast on my bike because yeah. my bike, I mean, it was, it was a BMC time machine, and it was legitimately felt like I was on a fucking spaceship. Like, <sighs> Fast, like my rides went from 20 miles an hour to, to, to 23 miles an hour. Like, mm -hmm. like me and my, my one of my training partners, we did clash, or I mean, a whole team did clash. But me and my buddy Damien, we were back and forth. We averaged like 25 miles an hour on the bike, like for. So you've done triathlons too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Jeez, and triathlon That's is sick. like a, it's, it's fun because yeah. it mixes it up. Yeah. That Holy was my bike. Cow. That's a bike. Wow. Yeah. And it looks like a spaceship, dude. Yeah, it, it does. Look like a bike. It doesn't. Those don't look like tires. Yeah. Wow. What are they so, made of? Yeah, that's basically so, what mine looks like. So a while back, I was able to shoot some um, uh, Jared Shoemaker. I don't know if you ever heard. He's a triathlete yeah, from back in the day. So yeah. So he uh, made it to the Olympics once, yeah. and then he was trying out to make it to the Olympics again. And we were hired as like a, a camera crew to follow him around okay. for the three races to qualify into the Olympics. Yeah. And uh, he ended up winning the first two, and then got like. 
a fifth or something like that on the third one and yeah. didn't qualify. So we were, you know, we were released as the as the camera crew because he didn't make it. Right. But um, but dude, the some of the technology that he had on on his bike. Oh, dude, it's wild. It's fucking insane, yeah. dude. Insane. Like and this a, was like, and this was like eight years ago. Yeah. So I can only imagine what they got now. I'm like a numbers person, like I like yeah. to look at all of the the numbers, whereas like. Some of my like my other training partners, they don't give a shit. Right. They don't use power meters or any of that. Like me, like I want to know everything mm-hmm. possible that I could take in to to help me dial in being faster. Um, well, that's almost like filming yourself because the more information you have yeah. about yourself, the more you can fix. Dude, if you running, just mm-hmm. like going from having somebody film you run instead of filming like a like a selfie, you know, like while you're running, like it it will help you change your stride like, mm-hmm. like and that's like that's the the whole way to not get hurt mm-hmm. while running form, is, is yeah. having the right form you yeah. know what i mean and that's that's how i hurt my hamstring recently i just came off of like a week and a half no running strictly stair stepper um lifting you know keeping my load up is what i would say mm-hmm. um and making sure i'm not losing fitness but i had irritated the tendon back here not where i tore it um, because I overran in a pair of shoes and I just naturally, you know, I overpronate on this side and, and I didn't, I wasn't paying attention. I tracked the, the miles of my shoes, but I was just kind of where I'm at right now with miles is, is, you know, we're running a lot. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'll yeah. go through a pair of shoes a month. Easy. Holy really? Shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to think you're doing 50, 60 miles a week. You get, you know, 300 miles out of a pair of shoes you know, You're mentioning you know the money, it. man. It can get, it can, it yeah. can get out. It Dude, start adding up, huh? Yeah, I have a basket in my garage, and I'm just waiting for like the next race to donate all these shoes. Like, you know, like I don't know what they're gonna do with them. Maybe mud runs, whatever. But I don't want to throw them away because right, they're, they're, they're still usable, just not at your level. Yeah, like for me, it's like they're they're the time is over. You know, like uh-huh. it's, now let me ask you this because we've had you know of all the runners, they wear like a very minimalist shoe, no. like almost like a barefoot. Yeah. But mm-hmm. like these, these are the Cam Haynes. Mo- <laughs> these yeah. are the Cam Haynes model. Yeah, they look dude, like these, a lot look more. Look at the ergon- stack height on these bad yeah. boys. Like you know, but okay. just about the, so yeah, what's your what's that. your like train of thought on that? Okay, so like you said, like you're barefoot running, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I won't run barefoot, but I'll walk in the soft sand for miles. Okay. okay, and and that's gonna help stretch the toes, the feet. I mean, I do the same stretch Ooh. exercise that my my coach has prescribed me. That is all spreading your weight through the foot, because you know this is gonna run all the way up your leg and into mm-hmm. your back. Mm-hmm. So by doing that, walking on soft sand, it helps stretch all that. You know, like dude, if you walk from Beach Street, or I mean, sorry, from Flagler down to Beachway and back in the show, you in know, a soft, soft sand, sand just walking. Yeah, yeah that like, blows. Yeah, you will Shit be hurts. sore. Your calves, everything will be sore mm-hmm. for a week because mm-hmm. you're you're touching it in areas that you're not normally. Yes. yes. Whereas, like for for running and racing, okay, like when I sign up for a race, I'm not there. To, yeah. To dilly dally, like you know, right. where my goal for Leadville is sub twenty five. Like, and I'm saying that now, I'm saying it out loud, I'm putting it in the universe, like, yeah. sub 25 hours. With in a hun- 100 miles through a mountain. It's, I, I have no frame sub of Sub 25, reference. you know that, that Robert no did it in, of reference. Robert did it in what, 33? I don't remember. No, he was he like tell- 29 and some change. Oh, okay, He okay. did Bighorn in 33. Bighorn, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Bighorn's a total different <laughs> Okay, course. okay, okay. Yeah. The difference between Bighorn and Leadville is that Bighorn has more, more elevation change, okay. gain, uh-huh. Um, there's a lot of mud because of the time of year, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of snow melt. So you're getting a lot of mud. Um, this year he said, you know, it wasn't as bad as the last time he did it, but Leadville and the kicker with Leadville and why they say it's one of the hardest ultras in the United States is because 99% of the race is above 10,000 feet. Ugh. Oh, so yeah, that's right. So you're breathing. Just, you're absolute no oxygen. We're at seven feet yeah. in, in New Smyrna. Yeah. Well, you were mentioning that, like tr- being able to train for... Uh, races that have elevation yeah that you have to travel that's it that's the only way to do it yeah dude so, or or like you're doing the the stair step like or i'll do causeway re- i did 22 repeats in one day of the south causeway and i had like 1200 feet of elevation you know what I mean? like, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't shit whereas like on a stair stepper like wow. the stair stepper i did 540 floors and that's roughly about 5400 feet you know so like i'm 
hammering the stair stepper, dude. Like, and it's five hundred floors. Yeah, dude. Oh my yeah. god. It, I feel like I feel a like sicko. Such, like, I feel like, like such a, a bitch, man. People are looking at me in the gym, and I'm just sweating all over the stairmaster, and I'm just like, yes, dude. with a twenty pound vest on, you know, because right. I'm trying to. Yeah, you I'm, really. I'm wearing a vest and trying to, to carry through. all my shit, you know. Yeah. So like, oh I gotta, yeah, that makes sense. Granted, like my vest isn't going to weigh twenty pounds. We're going to try to keep as light as possible, but but Still why not train a little bit more yes. weight? Yeah, exactly. You know? Especially so, because I mean, there's I feel like there's can no, only help you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. getting ready. Like, you're in Florida, going to Colorado. Yeah, like, dude. You need to. You got to fucking do something psychotic, like yeah. stair stepper five hundred floors. Yeah. How, That's how often are you yeah. doing that? So, well, the last <laughs> week and a half, you know, because I wasn't running, I was doing it like every other day. You know, so like this week. Um, Normally, like, this is peak week, right? Mm-hmm. So I had, like, an hour and a half run today. Uh, we're doing hour 45 in the morning and then an hour 45 at night, but on the stair stepper. Mm-hmm. So we don't have – majority of the days this week will be doubles is what I'll call them, you know. Okay. So you get one in the morning, one at night. And it's really – the thing about ultras is you got to learn to run on tired legs because at some point mm-hmm. in the race, you're going to be fucking tired. Yeah. You're going to be real tired. And, like, that's – my mindset going into this is knowing – I'm going to hit that point where I'm just like, you which in collapse. most races where you're putting in a really hard effort, it's like, why the fuck am I doing this? Yeah. I paid <laughs> to fly out here and suffer. Mm-hmm. Like, what am I doing? And then that's the that's where the beauty happens. Like, that's where it's the where shit gets real, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I, like, it was like, you know, I'm part of, you know, Facebook group, stuff like that. And like one of, like an ultra running thing. And somebody mm-hmm. uh, mentioned something about trauma and like how you deal with trauma and i my dad died when i was 18 in a mm. freak accident him and his brother in a four-wheeler out in sam Sula, right around the corner from my house Sorry to hear that. my mom Sorry found to hear him that, man. i found my mom Oof. found the police it was wild and i think that after going through that and living with that for a while um it'll be 20 years you know next year mm-hmm. um it running is a way for me to by myself work through problems all mm-hmm. life shit yeah everything you're yeah yeah everything so like i i wow. that's all i mentioned to this guy I was like you know like I, i'll go out for a no headphones run if i'm dealing with some shit yeah no music no nothing yeah. and just kind of work through it and that's very important i think i, I think uh, i read a study not long ago where it was uh it they asked people you can sit alone with your thoughts for like 15 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes, or you can get a shock of electricity with 110 volts, 80 to 85 percent. And I, all you nerds out there, don't quote me, but it, <laughs> it was a staggering number. Chose the electricity. Yeah. So now I, you know, I, my hat's off to you because I go out of my way to like I sleep with no noise. Yeah. I drive my first half hour of the day is in silence. Mm-hmm. I think that's very important, man. Yeah. Uh, I I enjoy those runs. I mean, I, I do. It gets monotonous sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know, like you could think and then I feel like sometimes you could think too much, Mm -hmm. you know, and for me, it's, it's a good mix. Getting your own head. Yeah. It's a good mix to to, to do both. See if you can find that study. He actually got me into it because of that same reason. I was going through some shit and he's like, Max, dude, just go on a run, dude. Yeah. And I went on a run, and I was like, okay, at least I got my workout in. I feel yeah. a little bit lighter. I feel a little bit better. Yeah. My chest is not as tight from all the anxiety that I had. Right. It's like it completely released that. I was like, this, this is nice. I mean, it was like this morning, dude. I snoozed my alarm because all my workout partners bailed on me. Mm-hmm. You know, this was like a little bit of a speed workout, nothing crazy. Right. Uh, just pickups in the middle of an hour and a half workout. Mm-hmm. And... I just didn't want to do it, so I snoozed it, and then I woke up, and I just thought about it. I'm like, oh, dude, I got to do that podcast tonight, and I got dinner with the family after. I'm like, I don't have time to do this later. Like, I got to do it now. And literally, with like 10 steps into the run, I was like, yeah, fuck, I'm an idiot. Why didn't I just do this what already? Did I, exactly. Like, I already feel better, you know? Yep, like, and then yep. when it's Fine. done, it's yeah, done. It's like. amazing how hard it is to get Go through to that top. little step. Yeah. Keep going. Just get fucking started. Just get out the right door. There. Yeah, exactly. Out the door. What's that, pur- <laughs> what's that purple section? In one test... Nearly half. Nearly half the subjects gave themselves a mild electric shock during 15 minutes of quiet time. Oh my god! Just just so they didn't have to sit with their own thoughts. Yeah, and I think I mean. Wow, that's crazy, dude. Shane, shout out to like we don't have to look stupid to our guests anymore. <laughs> that's facts right there, homie. I like this. This is dope. <laughs> Let me ask you this because we ask every, podcast we try is to finally ask everybody together. This. Um, what do you think is that's more sick. important, or what? 
or you know, can you speak to the symbiosis of mental health to physical health? Absolutely. Okay, so first off, in November I'll be two years sober. Congratulations! Congrats, Thank you. man. Um, and I had a since my dad died, I just suppressed trauma mm-hmm. with drinking, mm-hmm. and I was drinking every day. Even after I had my son, you know, I thought that I would stop drinking, and then I was working excessive hours because I do HVAC, um, and it just got to a point to where I was just drinking every day, and my wife and I were fighting. I wasn't being the person that, you that wanna be. I want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, I stopped drinking, and, and it really, like, looking f- really from the outside in now, mm-hmm. um, it just, dude, it didn't fit like anything I'm doing like it just didn't make sense like I was mm-hmm. like my training partner called me Bailey because I would bail on the workouts because I was hung over <laughs> like yeah. all the time and yeah so for me I think that it to your question physical and mental work I think go hand in hand mm-hmm. you can't have um, one without the other kind of thing yeah I don't think it's possible right it, f- for me yeah mm-hmm. uh, you know everybody's different but working out is my way to have mental clarity. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, like I said, like a no headphones run just helps me work through things. Um, if I didn't work out, I, I wouldn't be anywhere like near where I'm at now, Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, yeah, I think that you have to do physical things, um, to, to have a clear mind. I mean, there's therapy, there's stuff like that, but you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, I think it's good for your mental self to do challenging things. There you go. That's what I was going to say too. It's like being able to put that challenge in your life, just kind of gets you out of that rut and puts things into perspective. Right. So I told you I had, you know, I'd been sitting down. I I got my, uh, my uh, video media company started. And so all I do is, is edit, you know, if I'm not filming something, a job or anything, I'm in front of a computer. But it wasn't until October of last year that I started working with Chris Page. Yep. And man, my I mean, my life is yeah. completely different. If I know? don't run or do something physical, like my coach is like a stickler on like one rest day. Uh huh. Which coming off of last year, like I was telling telling you, I did run every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was like a real it wasn't even the physical part of it. Like right. running after you start running every day for a month, you know, like the physical part is like your legs are sore, whatever. You yeah. like get over it, mm-hmm. get the blood flowing, go for another run, you're good to go. But it's the mental part of it's like the gog and shit. Like no excuses, just get the fuck out the house. Put the shoes Insane. on, rain or shine, it doesn't matter. Like there's so many days. Like it rained all day. There's no excuse. Yeah. And like just do it. Yeah. So and that's that's kinda like where I got with it was just it just you know it's got it's a non-negotiable. Well, yeah. it sounded like, like it happened. Well, it's like you. you don't want to feel shitty, so yeah, get do the work. Yeah. You know it's, what I mean? It sounded like I mean it sounds like you did it in that in the Texas race where like every doctor, every specialist, every like person with that would logical would have told you to drop out of that race. Oh yeah, dude. You know what I mean? Like, so many people are walking by me like, dude, are you, you okay? Wouldn't... I was like, no, I tore my fucking hamstring, you idiot. I feel like shit. Ah. I'm in a lot of pain. I didn't bring Advil with me because I didn't expect this. Like, yeah. or any kind of Tylenol. Like, like yeah. some. It's a gut check. Yeah. And, but we're. I'm not leaving. Like, and <laughs> do you think that you staying in that race led, is directly led you to getting into Leadville? Oh yeah, because like accomplishing when I your got dream done, that you wanted. When I got done. Like I said, like if you finish the race, you're allowed to put your bib in the hat. And I was the second to last draw out of 50, 50 spots that they gave wow. out for the run. I was oh my gosh, so you're just sitting there 48. Just like, I was saying bye yeah, to everybody. I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of here, hurt, dude. Like, I need to go. Like, I need to go cry myself to sleep. Yeah. Like, like, I need to go sort this out. Like, mm-hmm. And yeah, they call my bib number. And it was wild. what's funny about that race is that, like, as you know, you put your drop bags and stuff out and like, there's this dude. I had a raging mustache at the time, and this guy, <laughs> like this dude, goes, "Hey man, sick mustache." And I look over, and he's got like this curled up, crazy mustache. <laughs> and I was like, "No, you have a sick mustache." And shout out Critter. Uh, was Critter this, this is his name. name. Yeah, of course, it's <laughs> yeah, Critter. Yeah. And then this other dude, I forget his name, but you know, we're all talking about our goals, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna take our age group. Like, I'm, I'm gonna smash this." So on the last loop, I'm walking, and there's Critter under a tree. Like sitting by himself, like 
And I woke up. <laughs> what are you doing, dude, dude? What are you doing? He's like, I'm done, dude. I was like, No, absolutely not. We're Get five miles up. away, dude. Like we're yeah. five miles away from finishing this shit. And I was like, What's wrong? He's like, Oh, just, oh my god, like you know, like and <laughs> oh, you got to give him the biggest slice of. I'm like, pie. dude, I tore my fucking hamstring. Like, <laughs> At a quarter mile into the race, like you can't quit, dude. Like I'm hobble walking this shit. Like let's go. So That's you know, amazing. like I pick him up and you know we're walking. And he was having like granted, like especially in those longer efforts when you're living off gels and liquid nutrition mm-hmm. and just trash at aid stations. Like like naturally your stomach's gonna hurt. Yeah. And and some people, if you don't train properly, if you're not using your nutrition that you're gonna use during the race day probably gonna upset your stomach yeah right? so makes sense. like if, if you're gonna run a half marathon practice your nutrition yes practice what you're now gonna that use. just that just finally clicked in my head how important that is oh dude it's so important because the the, the longevity of the of the run yeah. you you will run into issues eventually yeah holy shit i well, just put yeah. it into a complete different perspective it happened to me the other day that day i was telling you where i ran and i kind of pussyfooted mm-hmm. it wow. i like i eat pretty clean now you know i'm trying to hit a, a weight target so i've been dropping but that day i ate like trash yeah like absolute garbage and i made it not even a half mile down the road and i felt like somebody shot me in the stomach yeah and i tried to run through it i made it to like the three quarter mile mark and i'm like i gotta walk like i finished my loop that i wanted i didn't go nearly as far as i wanted but it was like I, yeah, I learned that day. I was like, oh, your diet is heavy in this oh, yeah. shit. Like, it was, dude. I could it's feel crazy. my body trying to process that garbage, mm-hmm. and it's just like, oh, fuck no. Yeah. There's no food in here. Yeah. Well, dude, just... there's like, like, there's... It's amazing. Even then, though, like, there's... In those long efforts, shit hits the fan. Oh, oh yeah. I'm about to run 100 miles. Like, oh, I can't like, imagine, dude. Dude, I struggled. Of shit happened. I struggled on two miles. Yeah. yeah. Like, I did a 50-mile <laughs> race, I think it was last year, um... And I love Uncrustables. Give me a frozen Uncrustable, and I'll bite down on the frozen peanut butter. I love it. Mm-hmm. And, like, for a lot of my runs, you know, I'd have a frozen Uncrustable. I'd grab it, like, after one, like a bridge loop, mm-hmm. and I was practicing eating it. But for some reason, I'm like, I think I was, like, 16 miles into a 50-mile race, and I took a bite of an Uncrustable, and, and, and it was warm. It wasn't cold. Like, I like it. And I was immediately like, oh, what is this? So mm-hmm. now, like, all of my hard food, you know, like, solid food that I was going to eat – it's Uncrustables. I just wasn't Oh, you prepared. just brought a bunch of them. That's all I brought. I brought a frozen <laughs> thing of Uncrustables, dude. And we're in Florida. You're a yeah. new Smyrna local. <laughs> dude, like, so for me, like, I got my wife who's pregnant there with me. Oh, and shit. And then Nick, my coach, like, he, he was there, like, kind of pacing me on his bike. He was piggybacking me all day. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, like, they gave me the crossbow I left. And, like, I was running with this chick who ended up beating me who – was a savage you know like mm-hmm. undoubtedly she was a savage but yeah so i just i just had stomach issues like i couldn't i couldn't get food down so i survived off watermelon and yeah. tailwind nutrition dude is like my go-to so mm-hmm. i could i could probably live off tailwind for sure is that a gel based that's nutrition? like powder you mix so okay um hmm. i have like, to imagine that's huge in y'all's world like yeah because it's like easy drinkable easy or just yeah. slam it get the nutrition and move on and everything i've tried it's mm-hmm. the easiest on my stomach it's you can mix it heavy so i normally do three scoops mm-hmm. um yeah that orange one right there the orange the, one the mandarin orange that's the the jam so like okay. robert does a lot of yeah. scratch um, yeah, he was talking about that is that the ooh. same scratch as like kind, the same yeah thing? kind of same realm um okay. but with his diet and like how he does things you know he's able to like tap into his fat storage and stuff like that like me like i don't have any fat i got yeah. no fat like so i don't have fat storage and my diet i'm not we're on two separate diets so like we were talking while we were running on sunday and he says and he does about 200 calories per hour i'm like i fucking die i'm like for that 50 mile race i was doing three scoops of tailwind per hour which is 300 calories Mm -hmm. 75 carbs and then every 45 minutes i'm doing a gel so that's another 100 well at the time 180 calories and another like 37 carbs so i'm well over 400 calories an hour plus solid food and that's going to be the goal for leadville is just stick with what are you eating solid food now that you know you can't do the uncrustables um, I'm still gonna try and cross walls. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm gonna blow up. Yeah. I'm gonna blow up at Leadville. I know at some point it's not gonna be like it's it's not gonna be this you know pretty. It's a hundred miles. Yeah, I, mean, I, that's I don't think there's any that's that's altitude. Like so, I know, but yeah. I'm that's why I'm going there. Dude. Yeah, I will come back Challenge a different yourself. person, like okay. for sure. Like, okay. and that's kind of like 
what I mentioned to that guy on, on Facebook was, you know, like my severely traumatized self, mm-hmm. the only way I feel like I can get in there and start chipping away is around like mile 30 of an effort. And then I'm in the pain cave. And now That's we can go to work. Cave. Yeah, now we can go to work. Like Courtney Dwalter is like the best female ultra runner right now. She's mm-hmm. a savage. And that's kind of how she describes her pain cave is, you know, she's once she gets in it, she just goes back to the furnace corner and starts chipping away. And like the way I would describe I mine like is <laughs> yeah, sick. And making it <laughs> making more dark. space, yeah. you know, like making more space. Mm-hmm. And for me, I feel like the way I've described it is like I just envision myself in this room full of lights and switches, right? I don't know why, but you know, let's say something starts happening, like my knee starts hurting, and I'm just shut it off. Like we're gonna shut that switch off. That light goes off, and then eventually, throughout this effort, I'm shutting switches off because everything starts hurting, mm-hmm. and then by the end of it, I'm just pitch black. It's dark, and that's the badass. only way to get out of it is to finish the fucking race, and that's like, and that's just how I. That's a badass I, mentality. Take dude. me, that's take me sick... into the darkness, dude. Yeah. Like, and that's. And I think that's why a Fucking lot of people do. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> yeah, Damn, yeah, but I mean, like, it's you know, like when <laughs> that's, yeah, like that's beautiful, when you, man. That's when you, killer. Yeah. I feel like when you go through traumatic things, like losing a parent, mm-hmm. um, or like the way I met my wife was, you know, we both worked in restaurants, and I met her six months after her brother died, mm-hmm. and we kind of met through trauma. You know, this mm-hmm. was years after my dad died, but I kind of like I understood, like mm-hmm. I see you, mm-hmm. I know what you're going through. And it's gonna take a really long time um, to to get out of it, you know. I've, we both know that pain, mm-hmm, like yeah. particularly, and that's. I mean, it's been twenty years for me, yeah, and it's mm-hmm. it's still there. Yeah, it's never going anywhere. It's never going anywhere. Mm-hmm. You know like what I mean? But you find healthy. You can either find unhealthy or healthy ways to live with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. I've, that's what uh, I've I mean, found. like I said, I drank for the longest time, and yeah. like a new summer. It's Really, really oh, yeah. easy. All there oh, is yeah. to do, oh, man. There's everybody does. There are easy ways of getting in there. There's plenty and to do. Staying in there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's. I, mean, I know a lot Shane, of people. We're finding ways mm-hmm. to fine tune it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I have no no qualms with people that drink. Like, no. I, I yeah. still go out. Like after like, I was sober when we did the keys last, and we went out afterwards, and like I'm not a loser. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm not gonna be weird. Like I still smoke weed. Okay. Like, but but I'm not. There. But I don't. You know, I've quit Copenhagen. It's been almost a year. And and in all reality, I think quitting Copenhagen was harder than quitting drinking. Well, that's what they say. They say nicotine is up there like with heroin. Oh, God, dude. Yeah. And like I told my wife, I was like, when I'm 70, I'm going to start again. <laughs> I think about it every day. <laughs> like still. It's been yeah. almost a year. Still. That's like crazy. just the things that I did. Like, oh, I'm working with my hands. I do HVAC. Pinch Copenhagen. I'm driving Copenhagen. Like, yep. like just, it was always, since I was 17 years old, right. I was chewing Copenhagen. Mm-hmm. But drinking, like it was, like I knew it was bad for me. It's not conducive to life, so I'm living. I was not a good partner. I wasn't a good parent. And now, like... like Most importantly. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm my favorite thing in the world is being a parent. Mm-hmm. Like, I... I mean, since I was a kid, I remember holding, like, the first baby that somebody let me hold. I was like, man, this is sick. I can't wait to have my own kid. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to be a parent. You know, mm-hmm. my dad awesome. was the shit. Mm-hmm. My dad was the best parent you could ever ask for. He was smart. You know, he was super mechanical, which is where I got my mechanical abilities from. You know, we we did everything ourselves. You know, we we had ten acres out in Sam Sill that we cleared ourselves. We cut the trees down. We bought an excavator. We had a dump truck and a dozer. We dug the lake. Like we built a pole barn. We <laughs> nice. built half the house. Like so, like I learned so much yeah. from him in the eighteen years. You know that that I had him, and and it kind of transcends into the way I parent and the way that my son is so mechanical. It's it's crazy to see, you know, like, but, but I thoroughly enjoy it. So now like, you know, I quit my job, um, a year and a half ago. Did you? Um, I'm about to get my contractor's license, which is what I've been mm-hmm. kind of working on. Um, we kind of put that off to the side just for this Leadville training. So my wife has graciously been working and let me stay home with the kids, mm-hmm. um, which over the summer it's been sweet. Uh, but I've never had that. Like when, yeah. when my yeah. son was a, like, my daughter's about to be a year old. We're celebrating her birthday in Leadville, which would be That's sick. That's awesome, man. That's Congrats. Cool. Um, but I didn't have that time with my son because I was always working. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was literally like 70 hours a week in the summer doing HVAC. Yeah. And so, but that's one thing that I still, 
like hold against my dad, you know, is that he worked so much, mm-hmm. couldn't make the soccer game. Sorry, because he worked for Florida Power and Light, mm-hmm. and dude, you know, in storms, yeah, like storm season, those guys are working never like, around, around yeah, the clock. They're, always yeah, they're out constantly. Yeah. Right. Clock. That's like right. it was great, we were never without power, but mm-hmm. my God, dude, like I would totally go without power to have my dad around. Yeah, you know? yeah. And like and you know, God rest him. But you know, at the end of the day, like that, there's so much time he missed out on, especially when you look back at like you only had 18 years with, with your kid, mm-hmm. you know, and then with my two sisters. So like, it's, it's, uh, I learned from that and I'm not going to be a slave to working. Mm-hmm. I would rather be broke as shit and not get to drive a fancy car and not have a big house and all the bullshit and just be able to just spend time with my family, be with my kids, my wife, my friends. You know, I've got the same like group of ride or die guys that mm-hmm. I've been with for Mike and Tommy, I met when when I, when I moved here from Homestead. Yeah, you know they've been around since I was five. Mm-hmm. And then I met Damien when I was in fourth grade, Joe in seventh grade, and you know these guys were all my wedding. Mm-hmm. All their kids call me Uncle Casey. My kids call them Uncle. You know, like mm-hmm. so it's it's just that group. And then mm-hmm. outside of that group, I've got you know my training club, and I think that's where like. Joe doesn't really run. Mike definitely doesn't run. Tommy tries to run, but Damien, you know, he's part of like the crew okay. for running. Was Damien um, the soccer player back in back in high mm-hmm. school? Damien, the, yeah. He, was he is he like Venezuelan or something like that? I call him Mexican. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. <laughs> but no, he's not. Yeah, he's yeah. he's not. But we've, yeah, we'd always keep it real. Right there. <laughs> now I know. Now I know who you're talking about. That's yeah. sick. Yeah, no, that, guy's, he's, that guy's been athletic forever. Tan. Yeah, he's tan. <laughs> he's tan. You know, okay, okay. But um, but yeah, no, he's uh, he's not any any kind of Hispanic. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I fuck with him all the time. Yeah, man, um, awesome. but yeah, we played soccer in high school together. Mm-hmm. Um, and dude, I remember we my dad coached just one time when I was little. And we were undefeated. And I remember it was like right after Damien had moved here from New York. And me and all my friends fucking hated him because he took our girlfriends in elementary school. <laughs> um, but I remember like we were playing soccer against each other. And like the balls are here. We're kicking the ball. And the ball's out of the way. Then we're still kicking each other. Like, and my dad was like my height, but he's like 205 pounds. He's jacked. He's mm-hmm. huge. And I remember he just walked up and grabbed us both by the shirts and lifted us off the ground and walked us over and sat us down on the bench. And we just sat there and stared at each other like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I hate you. <laughs> That's and then after classic. that, you know, like we're, you know, we've been best friends ever since. So it's Shout funny how that works. It's funny yeah, how that works out, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's how, that's how me and uh, Some fuck you moment, and then you're yeah, like, all right, he cool. He's paced yeah. me in Leadville, so he's you know he talks a big game. Yeah, um, he's like, I'll run the back half with you. I was like, yeah, man, well, I'm putting you on the hardest section of the course, but I'll be at mile eighty. Yeah. You'll be at mile one. So <laughs> just remember that, and we're gonna be climbing Sugarloaf Pass, which is you know another eleven thousand feet. So you're going mm-hmm. up another two k of elevation from where we're at. Um, but yeah, I mean he's he'll be ready. I mean I'm not worried about that. So. That the really so the, at mile eighty you're gonna climb another two thousand. Yeah, and the, then the big kicker is, is Hope's Pass, which is, you know, you go. At this point, I could tell you the whole course like by the back of my hand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see this thing. <clears throat> but Hope's Pass is twelve thousand five hundred feet, and you drop down to the lowest point of the course right before that and do a creek crossing. So you got to go through ice cold water. Sometimes it's waist deep. Um, they normally have like a line, like a rope that you could. To, yeah. you know get across mm-hmm. um i think at that point of the race i'm not gonna really care about wet feet the only thing i'm really worried about is getting cold mm-hmm. um but you know we'll be prepared for that so but yeah so you go all you drop down to like nine thousand feet and then you go back up to twelve thousand, and it's you're gaining you know three thirty five hundred feet in five miles and then on the back side of hope's pass so that's steep Oh yeah, it's steep. Holy dude. shit, it's dude! Steep. That's like that. Yeah, and you're you're at mile Look forty-two. At that. Yeah, and you yeah, and you're on mile forty-two. More mile forty-two already. Yeah, you've so, already ran forty-two. So you got to go miles. up. <laughs> you got to go up over Hope's Pass, drop down into Winfield, which is like the aid station. They have they call it Hopeless Aid Station, which is at the top of Hope's mm-hmm. Pass, where you can you know get some stuff. Me. My goal and the chant I'm going to have to myself is just get the fuck off this mountain. Mm-hmm. Get okay. off this mountain. You will feel better. Mm-hmm. You're you're going to leave a part of your soul up there, mm-hmm. but just get off the mountain. So you got to drop wow, down off the backside of Hope's Pass, then run out. I think it's like 12 miles um, or no, eight miles. And then you hit 
Winfield, which is another aid station, which is, will be pretty sick. You know, they've got alpacas, like, bring all the stuff up there. So it's mm-hmm. going to be really cool. That is right. Um, That's dope. But, man. yeah, you hit mile 50 and you turn Gosh. around. And for me, it's going to be grab my my bag, you know, and, and so then... So people, like, you leave bags at the aid station? Yeah, you have dropped bags. Like, your bags, own personal so, stuff that people put up there? Yep, so, okay. so they'll, the, the alpacas will bring everything up, and, you know, you got your little Ziploc bag with the stuff you need, which for me will probably be a change of socks and some more tailwind, okay. maybe some goose, um, and then I'm not spending any time there to get cold. I'm going to turn around and just keep moving. Fucking go. So, just keep but then the you got to go back up Hope's Pass, which now it's I'm sorry, four what? miles... Not five. I thought it's you were already at the, the top side. at this point. No, you got to do it twice. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you go, so you go back up and over, and then you drop oh, back down great. into Twin Lakes. Oh yeah, you're definitely gonna leave part of your soul up there, yeah. homie. Yeah. That's so then awesome. once you uh, wow. once you get so cool. down, look at all covered with snow. It yeah. gets completely covered with snow. Yeah, dude. Holy yeah. So when we get shit. out there, um, when is the race? August seventeenth. Oh, so it's coming up real close. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll make sure that three weeks away. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's we're amazing. leaving. We're leaving on August sixth, so I'll be out there ten days before the race. We kind of planned it like that, just because you know they say about a thousand feet per day to acclimate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'll be out there ten days before the race, um, and wow, ideally dude. I'll be pretty well acclimated. The first thing I'm doing when we get out there is Hope's Pass. So me and my coach, he's been out. There, he's already in Colorado. He's he's been out there with his wife. They got a travel trailer that they're just oh, traveling nice. everywhere. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna go knock out Hope's Pass like one of the first days I'm out there and just kind of wrap my head around what we're what about it, to get what, into. What it's actually gonna like, be? Like, okay, dude, that's so, insane. Dude, 9,800 feet. Yeah, so it's gonna be wild, dude. Hope Pass. That's Look like at that. when it's ice, you know, covered in ice and snow, which it won't be when when we get out there. Yeah, um, but just imagine, dude. Still. But the river that you're crossing is because of the snow melt. So know? it's freezing so it's, cold. It's yeah. absolutely just. Yeah, dude. It's, it's way cold. colder than Damn. ice pass. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's so much colder. Yeah. So that I think that's like the main thing that I'm I'm going to be focused on is that if I feel like I'm starting to get cold, go ahead and start putting a jacket on. And okay. Just, dude, I'm at like 10 percent body fat right now. Like, I'm yeah. Like, what's the What's like the ambient temperature in Colorado uh, in August? It can be. <laughs> that's what my coach told me to be prepared for: high 30s to mid 70s. What? Um, in August, uh, is where it could be. So, so like once we get into the nighttime section of it, is when I'll. I'll start layering up just because I know we're probably going to be moving slow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's where the the race really starts is, you know, they said there's like a 98% chance of uh, completion if you get back from Hope's Pass before the cutoff. So they give you 10 hours to get basically from Leadville to Twin Lakes, which is, uh, I think it's 38 miles. 10 hours to get out, and then they give you 12 hours to get back. So, and then that's not including the, the Hope's Pass, you know, up and over, which is like a 20, 20 something mile segment. Jeez, so, man. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, I've got where I know I have little Excel spreadsheets that I've made for my whole crew mm-hmm. that are laminated, that it gives you the, you know, the, the time allotted with the cutoffs. Cause if you don't make the cutoff, your race is over. Oh, so you just got to be, you're done. That's it, dude. Yeah. You're done. So is, that like a, is that like a safety yeah. issue thing? Or yeah, just... safety issue, and and then you know they you know you have thirty hours to complete the race, and, oh, and that's kind of okay, how they gotcha. keep everybody moving. Yeah, but you know they give you ten hours on the way out just because you're kind of fresh, I guess you could call it. Yeah. you know mm-hmm. most people that are running hundred miles should be able to tank thirty eight miles, mm-hmm. um, and the the really only hard section. It's all hard because it's all above ten thousand feet, but yeah, you know you've got the Sugarloaf Pass, which goes up to eleven, like eleven five, I think it is. Mm-hmm. So, so you go up that, and then you drop down Power Line, and Power Line's like this two mile section of just power lines, and it's real, not too technical from what it looks like. Is there like a fluffy bunny way or something, or is no, everything dude. just like you're hard? Fucked? Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> like I, I feel like hopeless that's like, pass and yeah. fucking power line. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> That's just badass, man. Yeah. So I think it's just one of those. I mean, like I said, dude, going into it, like I, I, there's no way I'm getting through that day unscathed. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. And if I do, I would be scared for that. Like, yeah. I'll be the next dude doing a 250 mile race. You yeah. know, like Moab 240, sign me up. You know, like, so it's like two, what? Yeah. 200. Yeah, so, if you can munch out a hundred and not and be not like, be not have tested yeah. your very soul yeah. to its grit. So like, I think at some point I'm gonna mm-hmm. I'm gonna feel like I'm dying. And but that's 
that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. You know, that's that's no, where I'm get trying that. to get in there. And, you know, then I've got my wife's pacing me. So she's going to be pacing me for out of out of Twin Lakes. There's an eight-mile section. Mm-hmm. So she's going to pace me. And then Damien's going to pick me up um, at the next one. And then my buddy Harrison, who's also part of the Keys team, um, he's going to bring me home from May Queen to finish, which is like just over 12 miles. Nice, and then man. the last mile, my whole crew can can bring it in with me. So That's awesome. My mom's flying out. She'll have my kids for the day. That's awesome. So I'll dude. get to carry my daughter and my son will run with me across the finish line. Wow. It's gonna yeah, be sick. That is so cool, man. <laughs> so, that makes it worth it. And man. my son already says, he's like, so dad, when you finish the race, like I'm gonna be able to run with you. Like it's not like if you finish the race, like he Definitely when no fucking you're gonna have to drag me off the course dude like, <laughs> yeah. probably in handcuffs because i'm not yeah. fucking leaving yeah. it's like it's like the wolf of wall street like i'm yeah. here i'm not fucking I'm not leaving, fucking leaving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so that's like, badass uh, man and like i mean what what's what could possibly be a better motivator motivator than that yeah you know what i mean like you said on the last on the race in texas yeah you know what i mean it's like i've been teaching my this yeah, young dude. man, my whole life. When we start something, say, yeah. we finish it. You know, he sees That's it. That's the way to do it. Like he sees it. You're raising day like in, the next Goggins. Day mm-hmm. out, healthiness. He's already done a 5K. What? First in his age group. Old is he? <laughs> He's seven. He starts the run club at school this year because he's man. second grade. That's awesome, man. He got an award for yeah. He got award for the runathon they did, which I got the coach, and it was like, or like I was yes, out there volunteering, man. like I was running loops with the little kids. Like it was sick, dude. I enjoy it. Yeah. So since then, Big like part you know, of like, it, like I, like I, like I said, I quit working for the company I was working for. Um, now I'm working on getting my contractor's license, but in that time, I've also um, gotten my coaching certification for running. Um, so I kind of have coached myself through majority of my races. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, you know, like when you asked me how I got into the ultras, it was like the marathon distance is such a humbling distance, especially if you're trying to qualify for Boston and two of my training partners, Damien and my buddy, Arthur, they have both qualified and ran Boston. And for our age group, like to get in, you normally have to have a buffer because so many people are applying for it. So right now for the 35 through 39, it's a 305 marathon, which is a seven minute per mile. Yeah. For 27 miles? For 20, yeah, 26.2. 26, yeah. So that's fast, dude. Yeah, like, that's, that's silly. That's But if you want to go sub three, which is the, if you go sub three, you're part of the upper echelon of runners. Like, cause the way I explained so it and how mile, I kind of sold my wife on this, cause she just signed up for her first insane. marathon and I'm coaching her, um, is 1% of people in the world will complete a marathon in their lifetime. Why 1%. You say, why are you going to tell me now I have to do it? Okay. <laughs> now I want to be part of that 1%. 1%, 1% of that 1% will do a sub three hour marathon. I can't promise I'm ever going to get there. So <laughs> I can finish it, a marathon. It is absolutely possible. It just takes work. You'll and, laugh. and, and, time and endless amounts of effort and learning and you know like though i think arthur has and you've done this i have not no so that's how i got in ultras okay <laughs> all right all right well it's because of like fuck this fast running shit like i want to run a little slower like yeah, yeah. but longer distance the arthur did a, a 258 which was like a 648 per mile that's fast no, I can't. Wow. So fast. Yeah, that's for twenty silly, six point two miles, dude. Yeah, that's insane. So, that's and he's insane. about to run another one in January, and I'm, I bet you he's gonna go faster, just because it, it's addicting. Like, I have it's, to. yeah. Well, it's, it's gotta addicting. feel crazy to be able to reach that level. Yeah. And it's just like you said, it's gotta be addicting to be able to be that much of a badass. Yeah, dude. <laughs> it's like it's, I wanna. Because you literally like, I wear a marathon shirt when I go out, and people look at it, I'm like, yeah, dude. I fucking did that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, That's a badass statistic. I've done a lot of them. Know. You know, like I've ran with Arthur. I've ran 24 miles before I went to work. You know, mm-hmm. like, and that's just kind of the nature of the the beast. You know, like once you get yeah. into those distances, like it's just you know, part of the day. Part yeah, of the, yeah, exactly. Just, and and nature. that's kind of like what I enjoy about it is like, you know, you do something like that, like, 24 miles of threshold work. Well, you did 24 miles and you went and worked on AC. I, mean, I went and worked and anyway. sweat my ass off all day. And, you know, like, but at the end of the day, it's like work was easy. It's a high. It's that runner's high. Dude, Fuck. work was so easy. Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. Because exactly. that was way harder. <laughs> that's yeah. Way harder. Part. Like, I'm talking like sucking wind for three hours, you know, like, yeah. and that's, and that's just, I think that's why I enjoy that is because 
I can't think of anything else that would be harder than than doing those really hard efforts. And I think mm-hmm. that's where the addiction to running like really grabbed hold of me, especially when I stopped drinking. It was like I need to replace it with something because mm-hmm. um, I have a super addictive personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like super addictive. Well, I think I humans relate. are habitual by nature. Yeah, oh yeah, you know for what I mean? sure. Like we're we're social by nature and we're also habitual by nature. Mm-hmm. I think when I I stopped doing triathlon because of the kids and the biking portion of triathlon just takes so much time. Oh, like training wise, it was just so much time. You got to think mm-hmm. if you want to do 20 miles, that's an hour. If you're training for a full distance Ironman, that's a 112 mile bike. Okay. But there's three disciplines Four in triathlon is what I consider, especially if I'm coaching somebody, it's nutrition is mm-hmm. the fourth one. So, and then if you want to go five mindset, like if you don't have the mindset of, mm-hmm. so basically of, your life is taking over, taking it's, over completely. It's fully, it has yeah, to be fully like, and now that I'm, you know, we, we decided to have another kid mm-hmm. and now I have a seven year old and I have a one year old. So like we're real a hard reset on, on being a parent. I mean, I wouldn't change it for the world, but, right. but biking is just, to be honest, I don't even like biking. Like, I like mountain biking. Mm-hmm. I like triathlon because of how hard it is. Yeah. And and then it it's not so monotonous. You know, like you go from swimming, which you know I I swam in high school. Like mm-hmm. I was a lifeguard. Like swimming was kind of I'm not fast. I'll get it done. Mm-hmm. My goal for any kind of triathlon is just get the fuck out of the water. Mm-hmm. Get out of the water, and then that's over with. But mm-hmm. that's the shortest part of the the triathlon anyway. So yeah. just get out of the water, and then mm-hmm. my only goal at that point is get to the run because that's what I'm good at. And then get off the bike, get to the run, and then we'll start taking souls. Like, that's because everybody is slower than me when I get to the run most of the time. So it's just great just passing people. Mm -hmm. So, like, and that's kind of like how we're going to do Leadville. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that start off hot. Yeah. And my goal for the rest of the day is just to to take souls, dude. Like, I, I paced... Um, 20 miles later, you'll, you're <clears> catching up. They're, they're just barely moving. Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, the, the, a lot, the main thing about Leadville is that from Leadville to May Queen, which is the first 12.6 miles, there's a lot of downhill. Now, is, you mm-hmm. keep saying, is Leadville a town? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leadville yeah. is the highest industrialized city in the United States. It's, cool. it's okay. just over 10,000 feet. Okay. Okay. So, that's so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an old mining town. And that's kind of how the Leadville 100 came up. It's the second oldest 100 mile race in the United States, right behind Western States, which is like another hmm. bucket list race I'm trying to get no, into. Sure. Um, so, Ken is, you know, he was a coal miner and they, uh, one day the miners like, yo, we're done. And they shut down the, the, the mine and everybody in the town was a miner. Mm -hmm. So him and his wife, you know, came up with this idea to to do a hundred mile race. And I forgot how many participants they had, probably like 40 something participants the first year. And now this year there's like 1300 people. Holy (laughs) shit. So on top of the 1300 people for this, like the week before, um, which I'm going to try to volunteer for because you kind of get points mm-hmm. for the next year uh, is the mountain bike race. I have a 100-mile mountain bike race. And then so you're going you're to do that? I'm going to volunteer. Oh, okay. I was so I get my, what is wrong with you? Yeah, dude. well, they have the Leadville <laughs> Challenge, dude. They have the Leadville Challenge, which is where you do the Silver Rush 50-mile. You do the Leadville Heavy Marathon, which is a marathon with 8,000 feet of elevation. And then you got the Silver Rush 50, which is like 14K of elevation in 50 miles. And then you got uh, the mountain bike race that you got to do. And mm-hmm. then you got to do a week later the Leadville 100 run. So you do all five of those, and then you get like the special yeah. like, belt buckle, you know? Like, so you eventually, go, you go for one probably, because I enjoy probably. mountain biking, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it's just one of those, like, I feel like there's. And how long, like, what kind of time period wow, is this? Wow, dude. Like, all that. For me? No, no, no. I'm saying, oh, you just... Oh, no, that's one year. No, that's all within the summer. It's a summer season. It's in the summer. Yeah. All that. So you got to be ready, you know, like, like yeah, you got very ready. ready. I would say, yeah, you almost got to be out there because, yeah, like, you know, like you it's like, like live in the mountains for that one. For yeah, like so good... it's kind of well, dude, your body has to be has to build differently if you're out there all the time. Than, yeah, than is that the bow buckle right there? Back. Uh, I don't no, know that, that just looks is. like a classic belt buckle right there. No, but that's what it looks. I mean, the belt buckles are like that, and that's well, the reason behind Sturbo that. was rocking his bighorn one on the oh, show. Yeah. Yeah. I bet he was. Oh yeah, big old. Too, I was dude. like, I didn't know this dude was a redneck. No, dude. <laughs> he's just the. That's the sign of being a champ. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I rocked the hell out of that too. Yeah, Red Leadville Challenge. Oh yeah, that is. Yeah, it's the Leadville Challenge belt buckle. 
So Ben Lovato, sixty nine thousand yeah, feet. So sixty nine thousand feet, feet of total climbing between the between all the, the series. Months. Yeah. Wow. So so yeah, like that's the that's Fuck the yeah, I brought the Fuck, shit out of that boat. Well, yeah, I'm dude. a bad motherfucker. That's so that's like. the difference between the twenty five hour sub twenty five and a sub thirty is you get a bigger belt buckle. That's the only reason why I want to go sub 25 because I want the bigger one. Dude, if that's not So, fucking... you know, you go from, like, getting one this big or you get one, like, that big. And like, of course I want the one this big. Like, yeah. you wouldn't. Like, because yeah. I'm going to be rocking that shit anywhere I can. Like, that's wedding, badass, dude. belt buckle. Like, <laughs> funeral, belt buckle. Like, so, I'm going to let them know. Well, it's it's like, like the marathon shirt, dude. Like, you get the marathon shirt. Like, Keys 100, yeah. dude, I wear that shirt. I've worn it out. I had to get a new one last time we were down there because mine was so worn out. That's sick, man. So, it's got to feel good. But yeah, but you know, people just, ask about it. And I just read about that one because Ty, Ty was trying to, we were looking for one and he said, is it, do they leave out of Isla Mirada? In the you Keys? run from Key Largo to Key West. No, okay, sir. that's badass. Yeah. I'm not doing that. So the, the way we did <laughs> it is a like long have, ass drive. Imagine yeah, dude, that run, boy. Miles, so. That's crazy. And you did it with like a relay? We style did it as a relay, which, okay. which is by far the most fun I've ever had at a race. Yeah. Because it's like just sheer camaraderie everybody's dying with you mm-hmm. and the way we went out was like we we want to win who did the seven mile bridge stretch i did it this year cool nice. damien did it the that year would before be cool. i would i'd like that no you wouldn't <laughs> no, it sucks. Well, I, just, I gotta admit like i like the i love the keys but yeah no it's probably hot it bro is. we got there we got to the bridge this year cooking we were the first because we got third place the year before the two teams that beat us weren't there this year um i don't know what happened to them but you know they probably felt the same way we won it last year and then we didn't go back this year i wanted to go back because i just have this sick masochist type personality I guess, <laughs> you know like and, and i i'd love that race so mm-hmm. I, I was going to do it by myself this year and then the whole hamstring thing wasn't quite ready for that turnaround um i will do it by myself um, within the next few years, just because it's a bad water 135 qualifier. So if you win that race, you're in bad water. Bad water is mm-hmm. another one of those, you know, kind of lucrative races. So is it just like brutal Florida heat at its worst, basically? Yeah. And just I mean, you're there flat. like at the, the last week of May, last week of May. So um, just humid yeah. and fuck. Dude, 5 p.m. last year was 105 degrees. Fuck that. <laughs> when we got to the bridge, like me, I was like, if, if you look at my Instagram, there's a video of me running on that bridge and it... It's a sick video, but yeah. everybody on the in the van, like the whole team, didn't know that I was dying. Like my goal at that point, I didn't realize. Like I was trying to beat Arthur and Damien's times from the two previous years, mm-hmm. so I was trying to run six thirties or lower, like or faster. Mm-hmm. So I went out of the You're gate. Like, my first mile was like a six fifteen, dude. I was cranking. Dude. Yeah, that's the that's that's it. Yeah. Uh, and like it looks small there. It yeah, because oh, you can see the other side. Yeah, but when no. you're when you're approaching it, especially at twelve, like twelve thirty in the afternoon, it's like a mirage. Like, is that yeah. the other side of Marathon? Stop, or you Bahia can't Honda? see it anymore. You can't see it. Yeah, I don't know. If the, is that the seven that looks water? like Bahia? Because that's what like that stretch of like Earth is it's one of my favorites in the whole bridge, world. Right? From yeah. like from where Marathon goes into Big Pine mm-hmm. and stretches over Bahia Honda, I love that. Yeah. Dude, I love the keys, but it was. Uh, oh yeah, I don't. I don't want to run it. It was hot. I had two <laughs> handheld. Yeah, I had two handheld water bottles, and you know, you got to think it's just over seven miles. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like seven and a half miles, and I got like three and a half miles in before you hit the. There's like an actual bridge yeah. that goes up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elevated part. And they they went to like Publix. You know, they're kind of letting me get through um, a, a decent portion before they met us on the other side. Yeah. Um, and. After like three miles, I was like, "Oh fuck, I'm dying!" Like, "Oh my god, dude, I can't hold this pace." I was like, yeah. "But I gotta hold this pace, so at least they pass me." Like, and yeah, then as yeah. soon as they passed me, I waited till I like, couldn't see the van, and then I started walking. I was like, <laughs> "Oh god, dude, I need to take a break," because like, I'm like very like, kind of in tune with my heart rate, and like, I've never had my heart rate. Dude, when it's hot outside, your heart wants to pop out of your I've chest. I've never had dude. it hit 195, and my heart rate hit 195, and that's my Ooh. max heart rate. Like, yeah, that's like technically it's my max heart rate for my age. Right. So I'm You're immediately like, You're about to like die. oh yeah. shit, dude, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna have a heart attack if I'm yeah. feeling this shit. So yeah. like, I slow down a little bit, but like, they're all yelling out the window. I'm like, dude, you're a fucking man. Like, let's go. And then as soon as they got out of sight, I was like, I gotta fucking turn this shit down for a second. And I'm like Jeez. pouring the water. I'm supposed to be drinking on me, trying mm-hmm. to cool off, but at that point, it's the bottles are already hot. hot. Mm-hmm. Like, so it just wasn't even, God, damn. it wasn't in the cards, dude. I mean, I mm. averaged like a seven twenty six, I think is what I averaged. 
um, which is still pretty good. But you're in um, like the depths of like a lot of people. I have to imagine for like a runner in Florida, you know, I mean, I mean, you are in the furnace. Yeah, you're as close. You're so close to the equator, like, dude. The you can't, the, you the can't rubber sp- on the soles of your shoes start is, melting. Like start melting. Yeah, like, that's how hot it is. Mm. Like they won't let you do the keys 100 by yourself without a crew if you have not completed it before, because. Like there's so many people drop out from that race, not from the heat. It's because of their feet, because you're so wet. Like mm-hmm. the first thing we do to any oh. runner that's coming off the course is we'd have like three coolers in the back of the van. One's full of water, one's full of ice to, to dip shit in. And then the other one's got our food in. So we had this, my blue Yeti that I still probably don't put any food in because of the keys two years in a row mm-hmm. with it. There's your feet. It's not the feet. It's the, the towels that we're dunking and pouring on top of somebody so as soon as somebody would get done you're basically collapsing because we're doing like like granted it's you know like two three the longest efforts like seven miles over the bridge mm-hmm. but we're doing sub seven minute miles like we average 651 for 100 miles between the six of us dude that is fucking super human dude we're cranking that's so insane. you get off like even a two mile segment of like my first mile last year was a 551 good god I was like a bat out of hell. I'm like, let's go. You were fucking like, sprinting, dude. dude yeah, yeah. Dude, that's a full. You're moving. If you like, yeah. there's videos of me like on the Instagram. You see me coming in, and like I'm, like just like the sprinters in the Olympics, dude. Mm-hmm. You got to keep going to slow down yeah. because you're going so fast. Like, yeah. And all I said was like, like, dude, you're going too fast. I'm like, five fifty one. Let's go. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, Straight animal, dude. Yeah, dude. It's the KCHTTC. If you back up, it popped up there. If you do, do, type Sparks again, and it should pop right there. HTTC, yeah. Oh, uh, that oh, first one, the first top, one, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's somewhere down there, you'll see the keys. There's a lot of me running. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you this: When did this fascination with running begin? So, 2019. Um, when I moved back from Orlando with my wife and my son, we moved back over here on a beach side to kind of be close to my mom, and my older sister. Um, that was my first place overall, well, mm-hmm. male overall, um, at that 50 mile race. It was a cool trophy with the freaking alligator head. That's the keys. That's the section. Is I that the moment say. where you're dying and yeah. you're just trying to like fool them? I just them? kept trying to look happy. <laughs> 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 I was not happy. <laughs> Um, I'm great, guys. See you later. But yeah, when I first moved back over here, I got with. Oh shit! You've done an Ironman like, too. Yeah, I've done two half Ironmans. I haven't done a full yet. That'll be. I I want to do that difference? in my 40s, twice the distance. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, well, like, what's the distance on a half Ironman? Half Sorry. seventy point three. So I, I it's cut a one point two mile swim, um, fifty six mile bike, and then a half marathon run. So, but that's a that's a walk in the park, dude. Like compared to yeah. some of the other shit I've done, that's you know that's, I did that. I think my PR what? right now is like yeah. a five five hour six minutes or five oh eight something like that. Um, so it's only five hours, and it's not really and that's kind of equate things now. Like mm-hmm. and that's I think that's where I got better at running was when I stopped looking at mileage and I just look at his time. Mm-hmm. Robert spoke to this too. Yeah, you like know? if well, you, just your brain changes it because one's painful, the other one isn't. Yeah, and like and if deal. you think about it, like all right, so I'm gonna do a three hour run. There's twenty four hours a day. I ain't bad, you know, ain't, you know, and then, and then as far as Leadville, like I'm, I'm donating a day of my life, but the way I see it is like, I'm, I'm giving up a day of my life to um, do something to, very rare. I'm going to be a different person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause you just put it in a weird perspective for me where you're like, Oh, if you know, a three hour run, I got 24 hours a day. And then my brain went to, you're about to run for an entire day. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like the whole time you're running. Yeah. Just, just running. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Like moving crazy. I mean, there's yeah, moving, a lot of hiking. Move, moving. There's going to be a lot of hiking. But we're, okay. Yeah. Like the overall, you know what I mean? It, yeah. It's still a, it's still a race whether. It's daunting to say the least, you know, like, and that's, you know, I think that if anybody says they're going to go run a hundred miles and not be nervous about it, then they're full of shit. Yeah. Or they or don't they're know what the hell they're getting or they're, themselves or they, into. Or like you said, they need to be doing a 200 mile race. Yeah. Like Courtney mm-hmm. Dwalter, that chick that I was talking about, like, and she's been on Joe Rogan and, and she's a savage. She smoked Cameron Haynes in the Moab 240. She really? beat everybody by 27 hours. What? 27 fucking hours. She Who took, is this chick? Courtney Dwalter, dude. She is a savage. Look her What the Savage. And fuck? she's just like me when it comes to nutrition thing. Joe Rogan's just like, like, she's like, what do you, like, how's your diet? She's like, pizza and beer, baby. Love potato chips. Like, 
What's well, carbs? Like, they like yeah, the carbs. Dude. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, when Michael Phelps when he won all those yeah. gold trophies, he was like fucking. He's like, I eat whatever I want. He's like, yeah. I ate McDonald's yesterday. Yeah. But he's, he's like, you have he's to burning fuel like twenty thousand calories a day. Yeah, you have to fuel yourself with food. Um, yeah, Courtney Dwalter. She wow. uh, the the Moab two forty is like a two hundred thirty seven mile race through like Moab. You know, it's, it's, it's during like the desert, day. Isn't it? It, during yeah, the day, yeah. it's desert. It's like over hundred degrees at night. It gets down to like freezing temperatures. Yep. It's like wild. So it's, deserts it's just, like, are fucked. This girl came out of nowhere. She I was like a D teacher. Walters. Yeah, Doe Walters, right? Uh, what you said? Um, D. I think there's a U in there. Yeah, it's, but it's a D. Dewalter. Courtney Dwalter. Hopefully she sees this and she gets pissed off and wants to come on the show. Dude, she's she's <laughs> savage. She all this right like there. A, a person like Top that. One. Uh, go back. I bet you if, no, if you just yeah, no, just, just put yeah. the D and she'll pop up. Right <laughs> <there>. <laughs> <laughs> Noise. <laughs> yeah, that's her. So like during that during that effort of Moab, dude, she slept for twenty one minutes. Over the course of I forgot how many, like two days or something like that, and she said she took a twenty minute nap and a one minute nap, and the one minute nap was the best sleep she's ever had in her life. <laughs> wow! It's just like your your body shuts down, like you shut it off, and like a hard reset on a computer, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and you bounce back up. But she just did this crazy thing where she uh she did what was it? She won last year. She won Hard Rock. She won uh, Western States, and then that was like the two big races that she wanted to knock out and win and then like the day after western states or hard rock whatever one it was she goes yeah i think i want to do utmb and then she flew out to freaking switzerland and won the fucking utmb all within all within like three months of each other like back to back to back won it so she's breaking course records right now she's like insane and she 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 has no coach she has no experience coaching. She's just like she's a, just a, a freak of nature, dude. Yeah, she's just... Freak of nature. She's the one I was talking about how, um, you know, she's got the pain cave. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like... I think a lot of endurance athletes have some sort of, you know, pain cave yeah. type thing. Yeah, you know, a process to, 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 yeah, to yeah, handle like, that situation. Joe Rogan talks about it where he's like, you know, every exceptional Six person fuck. he's ever met, they've been through something. Sick yeah. video. You're like, there's something that... And, and I, I mean, I speak to it, you know what I mean? One day my story will come out, um, but, you know, the, there's a, it's it's in the darkness that we learn. Yeah. It's in failure that we thrive. Yeah, dude. You know, and it's in those moments that most people think, you know, it's it's like one of our favorite things is, you know, but did you die? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and I love that you're going into this. Like, you know damn well, there's a lot of people out there that if they're, you're like, oh, let's go run 100 miles. No, I'll die. No, you won't. You're right. just scared. Yeah. yeah. You're a little bit. It's gonna hurt a little. <laughs> it's fucking, gonna hurt a little bit, yeah, but you gonna, you won't die. You won't die. Yeah. Or like you said, like I love what you did for Critter. You know, like yeah. get on your feet. Yeah. And then like, that third walk. guy, dude, that third guy that I was talking to, we were like three miles out, and he was sitting on the side of the trail. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He's like, I'm done, man. I no, you're not. I'm like, I tore my fucking hamstring. <laughs> get up, bitch. Like, let's go. Yeah. You're three miles away. Yeah, are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? You just did. You're gonna throw it away three miles. Three yeah. He said 27 miles. You can't. You crawl it in, dude. Get over it. Like, yeah. Get over it. Like, stop being a bitch. Like this. This is. We're doing hard shit. Like we mm-hmm. came here to do something hard, yeah. and we all knew that it's very possible that the race ain't gonna go the way that you drew it up. Mm-hmm. Like it's I test know, you. like I know that sub twenty five might not be in the cards. Right. It is what it is. That sucks. We got five extra hours to finish this shit. Let's go. Yeah. Like f- that's the mentality. Like and let's just dig, dude. And and really, like with Leadville, the difference between a sub twenty five and a sub thirty or you know anything under 30 hours and over 25 is the the nighttime section that's where shit hits the fan you know what i mean so well it's got to be sketchier i mean you can't find your footing you're fucking going through the mountains it's cold it's it's everything yeah but also your you know your nutrition is probably starting to you know Uh, the wheels are coming off and and you know but you got to think there's all the pros are doing this and they're finishing it in the daylight I mean, they're they're finishing it at, in in the darkness, where most people are finishing it in daylight, you know, mm-hmm. ten a.m. Yeah. So these guys are finishing at sixteen and some change. What? So Dude, sub twenty five for me is like, oh, this is fucking. You know, these 16 guys are sixteen hours. They're doing sixteen 100 hours. Yeah, dude. Yeah. 
So, so for me saying sub twenty five, like these guys, you know, if any pro ultra runner heard me say sub twenty five, like this dude's a bitch. Like, yeah, yeah, good luck, bro. Like, you know, they're they're not even worried about that. Yeah. So I'm not going out there to compete with anybody. No, you're competing with you, with myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, I set these goals knowing that they could be unattainable. Right. I could go out there and have an issue with my hamstring. Who knows? I'm mm-hmm. hoping not. But at the end of the day, you're gonna have to pull me off the course. Yeah. You're gonna have to take me out. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, what I love about you is that, me over the head. is that you have the kid. You have your, you have your son, and he's and, out there. He's gonna he's, be out there with me. He's staring at you. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's watching every move. Yeah, that you make. And that's like back that's to like the like the thing with him and parenting and like I tell him all the time like it's okay to do hard things. Mm-hmm. Like there's a especially like oh. nowadays. Yeah, that little man. Yeah, dude, that's <laughs> that's my dude. Um, so like for me, it's um. You know, it's okay to do hard things and doing hard things makes you not just a harder person, but it makes you a better person. It make like I told him this morning, like, you know, like how calm have I been today, dude? I've been just so chill because I went and knocked that run out early. It wasn't hanging over my head all day. Mm-hmm. Like it's, and that's just how it is. So for him, you know, for the last five years, he's watched me come in because I always do my workouts early normally. Mm-hmm. Um, covered in sweat soaked either with my bike or you know whatever like with all these races i've been doing and he sees it he sees it mm-hmm. and he's gonna remember that and it's yeah. one of those i forget who it was but it's one of those uh and i think it was after i stopped drinking that i really have been adamant on trying to leave a mark is your kids are gonna find you out one day they're gonna oh, figure yeah. you out oh yeah they're gonna figure you out they're gonna know what type of person you are mm-hmm. they're gonna know what kind of parent you were they're going to know how you treated other people and they're going to figure you out. Mm-hmm. So it is in my best effort that I'm being the best version of myself every day, day in, day mm-hmm. out. And by no means am I perfect. Yeah, of like, course. Nobody is. Nobody's perfect. And that's yeah. what I tell them. But you we know, can try. Like, yeah. But you got to try, mm-hmm. especially with kids, you know, mm-hmm. and like it, they're so impressionable. And, you know, nowadays with the internet and shit, you know, like I'm, like I said, I'm, almost 30 years old i remember what it was like to not have the internet mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know we oh, yeah. did shit outside yeah yeah we rode i remember our bikes. constantly i, I ran remember from the when police the st- multiple times on my dirt bike in edgewater mm-hmm. i remember when <laughs> the street <laughs> lights the street light was the alarm clock yeah dude mm-hmm. and that's like with my kid like he wants to go ride his little scooter around and I'm like, dude i can't let you do that because of like all the people texting and driving like the last thing i want to see is my kid on the right. side of the road and especially mm-hmm. my wife because she's a she, you know she's an emergency room nurse oh, God. she sees shit that most normal people so shout out to any nurses out there dude Man. because they are another breed Takes of human a special breed, i could yeah. never ever ever do the shit that she does mm-hmm. like she is this like, is how I help right here, just getting people's perspective out. Dude, she is <laughs> my version of a hero, like just because oh, of the the people that yeah. she helps, the like shit she's got to handle, the shit she's got to deal with. Yeah, you know, like so she's yeah she's a she's a beast, dude. And like I said, yeah, she's about man. to run her first marathon. That's cool. And getting the whole family in it. Yeah, dude. So, <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I mean, I'm it's a family I'm affair. To get everybody into it, dude. Like she's like. She's well, you, undoubtedly going to do it. Yeah, um, well, I can tell you. In the I next, saw that text message from the next couple from months. Ty, man, you and you and Sturber will be hearing from us because we got to we got to. We gotta kick it up a notch. I've been asking this guy we should go to Door Sleeper Leaper and, no, that's, and go, that's where, fun, and go do it. That's where we're gonna it's start fun. training. It's a cool loop. Pick your feet up. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. Ty, wants, thumbs. <laughs> Ty wants to do a half marathon. Like I said, I, I just ran a mile without stopping for the first time in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also what I also found in there. Cause I didn't plan on breaking that mile marker. I, I had little markers, yeah, you know, and and like I got to the three quarter mark, and that was where I was gonna stop, cause I was like, okay, I'll, I'll hit mile next week, yeah. But I got to the three quarter. I'm like, in the last half mile, I haven't really got any more, yeah. Like I've just been riding this 150 heart rate, yeah. I'm not dying. Right. So let's just keep going. Dude, 150, you're good. One, 150's kicking though too, you know. No, dude, that's so <laughs> no, cool. I, I rest. How old right, are you? 33 yeah yeah zone two dude you're good. i rest yeah. like now don't you're wrong. way good bro <laughs> yeah so i just I, now i'm gonna push it you know I'm gonna, zone like, two is like what i would, would preach to anybody you know like after it's like mccaffrey method or whatever it is i forgot what it is but it's uh 80 percent of your runs should be in zone two and then mm. the other 20 percent you should be mixing in some threshold and and then some max effort mm-hmm. i will but, say 
uh, about three mm. weeks ago, the first barefoot run I did. Because shout out Bradley Krischer. Yeah. Um, he got mm. he got us on that and Ty. Yeah. Um, but I I was I I used I was calling it race the sun mm-hmm. and sa- it was sapphire to the rocks and my goal was to get to the end of the rocks before the sunrise so i could be out there while the sun came up yeah. on the horizon and uh like i i started feeling what you're talking about where like when you run barefooted or walk barefooted yeah, there's dude. parts of your cat like mm, the middle oh, of my yeah. calf i looked it up it's called the soleus mm-hmm. like i had never activated that before oh, yeah. <laughs> but it, to speak to like when i was jogging and then it became like a um, like a walk run, you know, because like my legs are on fire. And then I found that pocket again where I'm like, okay, this is okay. And then I just turned it the fuck on. Yeah. Like I have never ran like that in my life. Yeah, dude. Like to be barefoot on the beach, I see the sun, I see the rocks, and I just, I just opened up like mm-hmm. I'd never opened up. So what's up. that distance there? That's like two miles, isn't it? I don't know. I never measured it. Should be it. right around. Yeah, yeah something that's like, like that. two miles, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm almost I was like right on the dot. Yeah. I've got I could run from my house. I'll tell you, it's 16 miles from my house in Corbin Park to the dog park and back. Okay. Yeah, and that's kind of okay. like I, I can run. You guys are next. I saw Sturba <laughs> and another guy that that's morning. Right. I was coming back and I was walking because my legs are dying. And I see Sturba and like he's running. And I was like, man, you should turn around and just go jog with these guys. And I'm like, no, because they're going around the dog park. They're coming back up. They're going over the bridge. And sure, so I'm going over the bridge. I'm like, start with you're an animal. Yeah. Have a good day. <laughs> it's just kind of like it just gets into the, like, I like the, I mean, I love sunrises. It's like my, my yeah, favorite things yeah, to like to just kind of start the day with. They started, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. that, that morning light. Mm-hmm. Um, but There's then also like on, in such a beautiful town like this, yeah, man. you know, you you hit Flagler like mid run, and you see all the people out there, yeah. and they're kind of doing the same thing as you. Mm-hmm. There really it's is like, no vibe like Flagler Avenue empty at five, six, no, seven dude, in the yeah. morning. That feeling is just fucking just so it's home. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? There's so many times like because I'll run, um, I'll run from my house in Corbin Park over that little bridge over the road track, and mm-hmm. then onto the South Causeway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's so many times where you know, like I'm doing like a four a.m. run where like I'm literally the only soul, only human out, out there. No, yeah. no, no cars. Yeah. Even the hospital slow. Like, you almost want to like get shit. in the middle of the road and run down. The I do. Road. Yeah. <laughs> that, oh yeah, dude. I love it because people hate when man. fucking runners are running the road. Like, <laughs> I love it, dude. I don't but, mind runners, but fuck the people on bicycles, man. They get me sometimes. Yeah. For me, like I, I don't, I don't. When it's busy. <laughs> oh I'm yeah. Not, no, I'm not no, running no, no. the road. But yeah. four o'clock um, in the morning, do whatever you a want. A lot of people don't understand like why runners run in the middle of the road. Like I'm not an Instagram influencer by any means, mm-hmm. and I'm not good at making reels. But it'd be a good idea if anybody wants to take this idea. But you run in the middle of the road because when you run in the left or you run on the right, like when you run on the left, if you're going this way, this hip hurts. And that ankle hurts. Oh, because it's like yeah. this. Yeah, and you run on the right, right? Because you're not running flat. Yeah. This ankle hurts and that hip hurts. So if you That's run in the a- middle, it's perfect. But nobody that, like, like people that don't Holy run, they're just shit. like, oh, really fucking asshole runners running in the middle of the road. Whoa. But I guarantee you, on one of my runs, like, when I've got, like, five, six, you know, sometimes I've had, like, 12 people running in the morning with me. Um, I mean, we've had, like, 20 people at the run club that I do every that's, Tuesday that's at awesome. 5.30 now you know. at Manatee Park, right mm-hmm. here in New Smyrna. Damn, y'all. Um, I have to join that eventually. Yeah. Do a simple bridge loop, dude, and yeah. we've got people that will do, like, two miles out, two miles back. You can walk it. Um, like my wife was walking it right after she had our daughter. Is this um, at 5.30 in the morning? 5.30 at night. Yeah. And then, okay. um, Oh, so yeah, make it f- tangible for me to make it. Super <laughs> tangible, like yeah. 5.30 can't make it somewhere. Yeah. Not super work. tangible. <laughs> and then, uh, and then everybody would go out. Well, we normally grab dinner at one of the restaurants around here. Awesome, um, man. So yeah, like we got a good crew yeah. and that's kind of like how, like I, I met like a lot of the people that are part of that group, yeah. you know, like mm-hmm. the happy humans and, and, you know, I think that, like I was saying earlier, like I got my ride or die guys and then I got my training people. And when you surround yourself with like minded people that all have goals mm-hmm. kind of in the same realm as you, um, you can really do crazy things. Like when we went to grow, Augusta, yeah. we got fifth overall team out of all of the people participating at, at Ironman Augusta. And fifth overall out of like, we're talking like, st- people that have thousands of athletes on their team and we showed up with like 20 people and we dropped the fucking hammer like we were we had guys sub five like we're like these guys are flying for age groupers you know like and so it was it was fun and our kits like all of our kits like our racing kits are sick we get 
freaking comments all the time on them. So like loud colors like this, like that's mm-hmm. just kind of the person I am, so my personality. Yeah. Um, so no, I didn't figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it just fit, you know. And Nick is. Um, Nick is like one of my favorite people. And it was funny because like when we first met, like I told him, I was like, dude, I, I definitely did not like you when I first met you. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought you were like this California, like just asshole. And like, I'm better than everybody. And he's like, well, I am. I'm like, <laughs> 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 and Nick is a savage, dude. Yeah, like oh, yeah. he'll smoke anybody and everybody I know on a bike. Yeah. He's done like ungodly amounts of Ironmans. Like he's done, he just did Xterra in Puerto Rico and got first place overall. Got a slot for Worlds that he's doing in Nice. What? Like, oh, yeah. big time. Xterra, about any international. Yeah, so Xterra is um is basically like it's a triathlon, mm. uh, but it's mountain biking instead of road biking, and it's trail running instead of like road running. So it's much more difficult. Yeah. And he went out and hammered this. But you know, after we got to know each other, we did the keys together. Like we just like I'm like, oh, mm. you're me. <laughs> you're you're dimensional. And I'm you. <laughs> like we're the same. That's why I didn't like you at first. But now like you're like my best friend, dude. So like that's he was the first person like I hit up for Ledvo was like uh, You gotta surround yourself with people so that are better than you in real. what you love. <clears throat> or else you're just sitting back doing nothing. Conor McGregor's talking yeah. in that Roadhouse movie where he says there's something wrong with you. It's oh. real. Oh, yeah. I heard that. I heard that Roadhouse movie bombed. I loved it. <laughs> I thought it was good. I mean, I, it was, it was, I don't know if it was like my Florida ties. I think the idea oh. of like this broken down fucking dude just disappearing the keys. Oh, yeah. Like I was like, oh, I, I fucking. I feel like Conor McGregor's acting, and it was kind of like, eh. but he's a UFC fighter. Dude. I mean, like, he's kind of he just kind of played himself. Yeah, he's just like <laughs> this roided up like freaking fighter. <laughs> just but yeah, in, he's, there's something wrong. I thought with it was you. good. And Jake Gyllenhaal got. Jacked, dude. He did that part, dude. He absolutely. God. Did. I'm, I'm a huge fanboy of Jalen Hall, man. Every yeah, role he's, he's ever done. Outside of Brokeback Mountain, I don't know. <laughs> I, that's a good point. I never watched that one. <laughs> Which really I. sucks because I like Heath Ledger and Jake Jalen Hall. <laughs> uh, all jokes aside, but yeah, no, I mean, um, I think let me ask, let me ask you something. Um, like I said, we're we're kind of wrap. We're getting to the cliffhanger moment that I like to cut it off. Yeah, we're definitely having you back on after Leadville because I sure, want to see what you learned. Um. What advice would you give yourself at 21? If you could go back and just give yourself a quick piece of advice. Stop drinking. Ooh, I like that. Very direct. Yeah. Just cut it out. And you will save yourself a lot of heartache. And Just type in there's something wrong with you. Like, yeah, I think that would be pretty Okay. Now what about, say the next generation coming up right now like say we get some young men tuning in and maybe they went through a loss like we did or maybe they're going through like what would you tell them stop drinking yeah (laughs) and it's not that i'm a huge proponent of it but i think that uh it goes hand in hand with on top of that but but don't do dumb shit like jocko says yeah don't do dumb shit and and do hard things right there down in the shorts. No, go down to the shorts. Uh, fourth one over. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, wait. Maybe that's not it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's um, like... Anyways. Lift heavy things. Uh, second one over. Work out. Like, yep, there it is. So that's when you and Nick met? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's something wrong with you. There's a video he sent me. Of, cause me and him, like for the two years we did the keys, we would just be posting on our Instagrams and stuff and kind of keeping our team and stuff like Motivated. moving, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. and, uh, like everybody back home basically. Um, and he sent me this video of him. It was right after I got done with like some crazy segment and him and John, one of the other guys that ran with us sitting in the back and I'm just drenched in sweat. I'm like beat red. And he just goes, Casey, dude, you're a fucking savage. And I just looked at him and I was like, I know. <laughs> like I feel like a fucking savage right now like and it was just like not like you know I wasn't like trying to be conceited or anything but like in the moment like dude I was like fired up yeah, like yep, yep. and like that I'm like energy the, yeah like I'm yeah. like the loud obnoxious like one of the group you know and that's just kind of how I've always been it's awesome mm-hmm. um but like you definitely you want to put a team together bring me along I'll take his places you hell know, yeah it's dude just kind of it's my personality you mm-hmm. know hell yeah. but yeah I think it was just one of those you kind of ha- you kind of got to have a little bit let's call it a, a loose screw 
yeah. like that to Wild be able card, to do what man. you do. Yeah. Because that's that's just I mean that's that's beyond human capabilities, man. Anybody could do it, dude. Like I I honestly think that anybody could do oh, 100%, it. percent, one hundred percent. And it just takes that it's breaking down the barriers that you have built over time mm-hmm. in your mind. You know, I think I've heard you talk about it in, in, in some of the mirror, podcasts man. that you've done. Like you, you put walls up. Oh yeah. yeah. And you know, I think that I, everybody puts walls up. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that when you start to find yourself and learn to work on yourself, right there, and learn to break those walls down yourself and not let, like, not have to have other people do it, mm-hmm. um, is that when you can really start progressing. Like, you know, for me, like that's just where like my life really started was not just not drinking but mainly focusing on myself holding yourself accountable yeah mm-hmm. like like not being afraid to look in the mirror and be yeah. like and be true be real with yourself like dude yeah. you're a piece of shit yeah like you've been a piece of shit for a long time yeah like don't be like that and like that's what i tell people a lot like after my dad died like i was a sh- i was a terrible person for a long time mm-hmm. like i i wasn't a good person i wasn't like I, I've always been a person that would help people, mm-hmm. but I was just shitty, you know, like I drank yeah. a lot, you know, like I... Thanks for being brave like, enough to say that, because yeah, I've, I've said it the exact same sentence yeah. myself, man. Like it's, it's like the Joey Diaz, like, you know, like the, sometimes you know, shit something happens. happened, yeah. you know, whether it be trauma or whatever, like in a, it kind of fell off the rails and, you know, and I'm sorry for, for just, that, yeah. you know, like, but you know, it just happens. You yeah. Know? Like, yeah. A, it, like not a lot of people go through... Some of the things that everybody has a different thing. Right. You know? yeah, like me, sure. I found my dad and my uncle on the side of the road. That night, I almost got arrested by the sheriff's office because mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out if my dad was dead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck, dude? Like, just tell me. Like, tell yeah. me so I can. I had to call my grandma, my aunt, my sister in London because she's in the Navy. Like, I had to make those phone calls because my mom was in shambles, you mm-hmm. know? So, like, like, that's like who at 18 years old has to do that yeah i was two weeks from graduating high school and i was a month from leaving for the navy like my goal was to be a navy seal a corpsman the navy seal and get out and be a doctor like that's what i that was the life plan wrote it down Mm -hmm. like that's what i want to do i was training with the navy seal coordinator jacksonville i was swimming i was running i was Mm -hmm. great shape like i was ready you know and and then it just like a bomb went off my life and you just get stuck shit happens Yeah. yeah and it's how you deal with the shit is what makes you into the person that you're going to be. Yeah. And for me, I think that I just got fed up with being a piece of shit and running kind of took over the, the areas of my life that, you know, that weren't working mm-hmm. or weren't jiving with where I wanted to be. And then after being a parent and then, you know, f- finally getting married to my wife, you know, we've been together to be I think, 12 years this year and wow. we got married Congrats, on our 10 year anniversary. Congrats, man. So, Congrats, you know, it's like one of those, like I knew from the moment that I met her that this was like your person. One. But there's countless times that I, you know, could have lost her because of my just sheer stupidity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just not caring, you know. Mm-hmm. Like and I think that I think that I I've changed a lot and I think that I have a lot more room to grow and to change. Um, but I think that finding ultra and and these hard things that I've been doing has just kinda helped mold me into where I'm at currently. But, you know, I would like to say that I'm nowhere near, you know, where I want to be. Yeah, the end. Mm-hmm. Um, and Leadville is just going to be another stepping stone. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just another one of those. Another like, growth well, spurt. From the bottom of my heart, man, thank you for off. fucking, that was deep, man. That was that beautiful, was, man. Thank you. That's awesome. Not yeah. That was brave. Yeah. And, like, the people that are out there, like, like yeah. it's totally fine. Like. Yeah. Sometimes you just suck. Yeah. <laughs> you oh, yeah. know, like Amen. And we, uh, no, and a lot of us when we're young too, we 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 do suck. Dude, we do my, suck big time. When I was time. nineteen, my whole family and friends tried to have an intervention for me. Yeah. Like, you know, like that. Yeah. I walked in, I was like, <laughs> "Fuck you guys!" <laughs> like, I'm out of here, and I got my truck and I left. Yeah. You know, like, and after my dad died, you know, like there's a couple times I sat in the tiki bar that we built for him with a gun in my hand, ready to fucking just kill myself because I, like I. Mm-hmm. I didn't know where I was at. I didn't know what to do. You yeah, know, I was, like that's. I was 13 years old, and when my mom came and found me at the pool, told me that my dad OD'd because it was the <sighs> first. Fuck, dude, it was the mm-hmm. first weekend because like he was, he was not a good man. Yeah. Um, but we finally had this good weekend, right? Um, first one in like my life. Yeah. Surfing, hanging out. Like I finally got my dad, and then the next day, 
you know, I find out. Um, so I, I get your response because I, I was 13. I grabbed a, I, I reached in the, in the fridge and I grabbed a six pack, and and I grabbed a bottle of liquor and I just ran out in the woods. Yeah, and just drank it all. You're I, just like they don't like. like 13 where years. do you how do you deal do you, like you know yeah. like it's you know and like well, for me like you get stuck, ball, yeah. the person yeah. that was like the one that has always like guided me and and mm-hmm. taught me right from wrong and to make my bed you know because my dad mm-hmm. was a diehard marine like mm-hmm. just live sounds like eat, a great man good man exactly fucking like marine corps man. you mm-hmm. know what i mean and dude, he was from Harlan, Kentucky. I'm talking like, <laughs> oh, he's hardcore. <laughs> oh, dude, like, <laughs> like, and just my cousins in town right now. I haven't seen that my cousin, who's my dad's brother, that died with him. Um, mind you, they're from Harlan, Kentucky, and my uncle was in a halo, broken neck and back, got on the four wheeler with my dad. Oh, and they clipped a tree coming around a corner. So he shouldn't have been on a four wheeler to begin with. Yeah, um, he had had a motorcycle accident like three months prior, and that was just. What the fuck are y'all doing? Like, well, yeah. I see where you get your... The uh, lifestyle, though. That's, uh, that's, see where that's you the get mentality. your intensity from. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. Like, so, and my dad full, was just intense. Full throttle living. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm like a full gas. There's mm-hmm. no brakes on this vehicle. Yeah. You know, we're we're going all the way. Yeah, and that's yeah. just kind of how I've always been. Well, I cannot wait to see where that mentality keeps taking you. Um, I am going to cliffhanger this yeah, because we are at <laughs> such a beautiful... This is one of my favorite podcasts hands down <laughs> yeah, dude. and I, I it's like the hardest thing i've had to do in my life is like take something i love so much and just cut it off because mm-hmm. i it, it keeps these people coming back yeah dude um we have i'm sure you're ready for these two mm-hmm. yeah you know, people are starting to get ready we have the two questions we like to bring it home with yeah um so the first one i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna re phrase it a little bit and uh the question is uh how have you been your own worst enemy? Oh, I've in definitely life. been my own worst enemy. Yeah. Like un- un- yeah, undoubtedly, have been standing in my own way for the majority of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, you built those walls up, and I kept just stacking bricks. You know, mm-hmm. and I can't say it. Mm-hmm. there's times, you know, where I'm still my work like this morning hitting snooze in the alarm, mm-hmm. and then immediately I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yep. There's no time for that here, you know. That's the difference, though. You stopped yourself, you realized, and you got up and, and yeah. Did it. And you know, like, and I think that everybody at some point in their life is their own worst enemy, if not all the time, until they can figure out, you know, like I'm I'm in charge of this flesh vehicle. Mm-hmm. Like there it is. this is my fucking time. Yeah. We only got one shot at this. Like it's like an Alan Watts quote that I absolutely love. Mm was is just about being present and how the past and the future you're thinking about it in the present so stop being so focused on the past and the future and just be present and that's like one thing i've been focusing on you know in the last couple of years is just being here now mm-hmm. present with with you with where you know whatever i'm doing mm-hmm. and i think that's just kind of where it's taken me mm-hmm. and and yeah, so it's okay to be your own worst enemy. There you but go. Ooh, I, I think that. it is. It's. But also pick yourself back up. Yeah, dude. Like yeah. you can't. Like what is it? Get knocked down once and get up twice, or yeah, whatever yeah, it is, yeah. or whatever the saying is. You know, like. But yeah. you know, I think that you know you just got to keep getting back up. Mm-hmm. And that's with ultra, dude. Like with ultra, like you're gonna get knocked down. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're gonna get <laughs> gut checked. Yeah. It's kind what of is a Mike the... Tyson quote? It's like it's all fun until you get punched in the fucking in the face. Yeah. Punch <laughs> the you know, like and and ultra is like getting punched in the face yeah. repeatedly. You know, like, <laughs> like so, a lot. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to war, dude. Like, and that's that's why I like it. Yeah. It's like it's. It's, it's you're voluntarily paying. You're paying. <laughs> this is a ten thousand dollar trip to Leadville. You know, between yeah. between the flights with the family, between mm-hmm. the room, between the cost of the race. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm paying to, to suffer. Do this, yeah. Like to to just suck wind for possibly thirty hours at altitude. I can think of no better investment. That sounds fun to yeah. me. Like that sounds yeah. like a wild trip. Well, it seems like you're you're look at, you're seeing a, a beautiful part of the country that's like. That yeah. not many people Might get to see. Might not come back. Exactly. You know, like, I, you know, hold, I love New Smyrna, but you know, <laughs> you can always come back. I hold one thing above all else in value in this lifetime, and that's memories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing you're going to get. Dude. In, in that, in that moment, you die. You. Yeah. That's all you get. Yeah. Yeah. I told my kid, I was like, you're not bringing your Nintendo to Colorado, dude. Mm-hmm. No time for that. We're no. Out. We're out. We're yeah. doing stuff. We're hiking. We're seeing do. shit. We're, 
riding the train to the top of Leadville. Yeah, I mean, come like on, the steam dude. train they got. Are you serious? Yeah. We don't got that so, here. Like, no. the beach is great, but I've had it for 37 years. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, the exactly. first time I saw Vertical Earth in, yeah. in New Hampshire, mm-hmm. like, I just pulled the car over. My ex yeah. what yeah. are you doing? I'm like, what are you talking yeah. about? My, I'm like, I didn't wife, know Earth could do that. Yeah, my wife and I stayed in some yurts over in Virginia okay. on the ma- in the mountains. Yeah. And, dude, I'm telling you, I could live in the mountains. Dude, okay. it's... After living in that weather and that environment, pfft. That's really freaking nice. I don't know if I can nice. get wintertime when it gets like real, real cold. Oh, there. yeah. The cold sucks. I can only imagine. But, Anyways, man. All right. So, the final question um, for the treasure hunters is uh, now that you know, you've become familiar with, you know, the message we're trying to push, how important is it for people to keep a trash to treasure mentality in their lifetime? You know, I've thought about this a lot. And I think an easy way to put it is like one man's trash is another man's treasure. Mm-hmm. It's super simple. Mm-hmm. But... At the end of the day, like anybody could think you're trash, but your trash could be fuck, perfect. You know, like I said, like you know, my my Ooh. thing is like I don't give a shit like about that. money. I don't care about like the biggest house or driving a freaking G wagon. You know, mm-hmm. like if it comes, it comes. But that's not my focus. Yeah, right. my focus is now, the present, creating memories, like you said. Mm-hmm. And and some people might look at my life. And then we're like, oh my God, oh dude, you, you don't fucking drive a nice car. You don't have a big house. You know, you don't have all this. But I'm like, I got time. Mm-hmm. I got so much time mm-hmm. with my kids. Whereas like some of my other friends are working their asses off for the man mm-hmm. and they don't have that. So mm-hmm. I believe that it's, it's all about perspective and how you look at treasure or trash. Yep. And I think that it's very possible for someone's trash to be someone else's treasure and it's just about how you look at it, mm-hmm. you know, like it, about the perspective you have going into it. Um, I like the subjectiveness of that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I like, like and it, it's, you know, it's a, anybody can can have that type of mentality, you know, mm-hmm. like, but some people just get stuck mm-hmm. in, in that. Oh, yeah, I got to be this Instagram influencer. <laughs> I need to yeah. get Botox. I got to look like Kim Kardashian, you know, like to that, me, comparison. I think that looks like trash. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you yeah. see these chicks with big lips like, no, my wife is a smoke show. <laughs> right, she got no Botox. Mm-hmm. All right, none. And she asked me, I'm like, "Don't ever, dude. Like, you're yeah. gorgeous. No, I tell her all the time, no makeup, please. Like, just mm-hmm. stop it." Dude, is a woman ever more beautiful than when she like first wakes up? Like, and she like dude. you got a woman that loves you. Like, I tell her all the time. Up. Well, it's the love. It's that. It's that. Yeah. It's that level of love that you have for that person that yeah. you just cannot Especially compare. Especially if they're wearing your T-shirt. Yes. Like, oh Except for my marathon shirt. Look at Shane. Look, look <laughs> no. back on the wall. <laughs> He's like. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except for my marathon shirt, though. And I already told her. Like, that <laughs> Don't touch shirt on until you, wear a, until you run a marathon, all right? <laughs> and I'll stand by that. We'll hold dude. you accountable for that one. <laughs> yeah, anybody that runs a marathon is going to understand where it comes from. <laughs> That's fucking, fucking awesome. All right, well, hopefully I earn mine in the next couple of years. Yeah, dude, do it. Um, it's possible mm-hmm. for sure. You know, before we wrap this thing up, um, we like to go ahead and, and give our guests. The floor is yours, man, if you want to promote the show, promote anything you want. Yeah. Yourself, yeah. Races, your companies, businesses. your clubs. Yeah, yeah. Let, the, let the whole world know who you are and, and what you're a part of and, and where this is going, man. All right. Well, first off, shout out to my wife because she is there. It is my favorite person in the whole world. Mm-hmm. My kids, my family, my friends, you know, Nick, my coach, Happy Humans Training Club. Mm-hmm. Look him up. Um, we got a lot of cool things going on he offers all kinds of coaching services Mm -hmm. Um, I myself am also starting to coach running so if you're looking for any kind of assistance whether it be learning you know from the nutrition side working out um, Mm -hmm. and and just building training plans stuff like that that's what I'm kind of getting into just dabbling in Um, I've got an extensive resume at this point Nick my coach has a ungodly extensive resume um <laughs> and he could put you on the right path uh, if i cannot but outside of that i mean um I'm not fully open yet with my hvac business um you know i plan on taking my contractor's license test when i get back um, Good luck. i'm not building yeah, a company i'm gonna work one or two days a week i'm gonna keep doing the thing i'm doing and spending time with my kids mm-hmm. um but if you know like i said i, I love helping people um and that's kind of like where i'm at with my life right now so i'm not trying to rip people off and stuff like that so i'm just keep it honest keep it real um yeah man it's kind of it's where we're at i love it i appreciate you guys no i appreciate you coming on again coming on man man. i'll definitely do it again absolutely we can't wait for that (laughs) well hope you enjoyed it and as always keep treasure hunting loyalty love and laughter catch y'all next time see you on the next one sick fuck yeah that was fun guys